just go somewhere else. I can't take this nonsense anymore. How are you going to blame the defense? I got the pouch. Screw green bean. <laughs> Damn it. But once you get to the sausage, I feel like we're doing something. Go Jets. And that's the other part of this, the people are insanely jealous of this show. This show gets the best of the best, and it does a different way, with positivity. He scores! Ow, my head! No, no, come on, come on, come on, come on. What would you give up to see a Jets Super Bowl? All of my friends and family. <laughs> Hit those milk thumbs, boys and girls. Freeze run. Freeze. Jets, 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 Jets. Hold on to your underwear, ladies. And stand by, bitches. It's now time for Talking Jets with your hosts, Matt, Ryan, and Greenbean. Welcome to Talking Jets. My name's Ryan, and I'll be your pilot tonight. I'm joined alongside my co pilot, Mr. Greenbean. To my this way, Mr. Matt O'Leary will be joining us in a little bit. Greenbean, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I feel lonely, though. This is weird uh, without. Uh, O'Leary hanging around, but uh, we could do it for a few minutes, I think, you and I, right? We did it last night for a little while, so mm -hmm. we're here again. This is nice. Yeah, if you guys have not checked out the 10 o'clock mock from last night, Greenbean and I uh, took care of business. We thought we got a pretty good draft. Definitely recommend you check it out over on Greenbean Jet Fan, uh, 10 o'clock mock from last night. Boys and girls, if you're just hopping in, make sure you hit that like button. For every 25 likes we get on this video, we're going to select a t-shirt qualifier for the end of this stream and if you leave a timestamp comment down below, if you're watching this after the fact, we're going to go back to last week's video to qualify people for this giveaway at the end of the show. Could be a jersey, potentially. Could be a hat. Good. A pillow. Hype got a pillow. I actually just put that order in this morning. Did you? So, oh, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm so bad with doing it, like, on time. <laughs> but that's all yeah. right. But you get it eventually. Do it. Yeah. Everyone's going to get their stuff. Um, if you guys have not done so already and you feel so compelled that you would like to come to the Talkin' Jets first round draft party at the main event on Long Island, TalkinJets.com, link in the description down below. We got tickets on sale for about another two weeks, and then we got to close up sales and be able to let them know what our final counts are going to be. We're really excited for it. We're going to have a crowd cam, buffet, three hour open bar, ah, oh, raffles, a whole bunch of stuff. I'm really looking forward to it. Actually, the, the cornhole uh, things got to my house this morning. Oh, you should take some pictures, dude. Uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't even open them up. It, uh, they like I shouldn't say they came in this morning. They came in this afternoon, and I was like running around, and I was like, ah, didn't have the opportunity to like at least set it up and play a little bit in my house. That's what I was hoping to do. WM in the chat said I should have to. It is, he wants to make it a requirement that I only wear exclusively green glasses. What do you think of that? Hmm. Now, that could be seen as two different things. It's either green, you see green everything frame. through green-colored lenses, like yeah. pink, like rose-colored glasses, uh, only the jet version of that, or he wants you in green glasses because you're green bean and you're not like black bean or like, you know, brown bean. or like Garbanzo know, whatever, bean. Garbanzo bean. Yeah. You're green bean. Green so that makes bean. sense. All right. Everything's well, got to be green. Like, I don't know why you're wearing a yellow shirt. You're not yellow bean. I, I, yeah, I'm not yellow bean. And I have green all over the joint, too. I got black. <laughs> I got green. I got good. We're doing a little bit for WM right here. Is it crooked today? I don't even know. That's all right. It, it, you look fine. You look beautiful. Look fine. Let me see. Hold on. Other oh, way. Wrong way. Yeah. Oh, I do that way. all the time. It screws me up. When all I try right. to do the pilot hat and there's like straps that are goofy and whatnot, impossible uh, goggles slightly yeah. askew nope can't do it on the first try ever yeah ever ever because it's bad it's right it's backwards for us it's like mm -hmm. weird You're like every time i'm trying to fix my beard i always brush the wrong side and shit <laughs> <It's> like, weird. <laughs> it's weird boys and girls make sure you let us know your thoughts on everything going down the latest draft rumors the thoughts on the number 10 pick the hassan reddick trade we're going to jump into all that o'leary will be joining us just a little bit here Greenbean, I guess I want to hop over to you. Ask your thoughts on the Hassan Reddick trade. What would you think of the value the Jets got? What do you think of the player? What does it uh, mean for our New York Jets? So I literally just hung up. I literally said to him, dude, I, I we were talking Hassan Reddick and Bryce Huff because he's an Eagle, diehard Eagles fan, lives in Philly. And I talked to a few others, right, as I shared with you. I had a, I had a, one in particular told me he thinks – 
that the Eagles were dumping. As much as he likes Hassan Reddick and he's good, he said he thinks that he's on his way down and mm. the Eagles are kind of dumping him and going young with Bryce Huff. So I talked to this Eagles fan today and I literally just said, dude, like, I got to go. This dream starts in eight minutes. Like, I, I, I got I to I gotta go. I can't just fucking chit chat. Um, and he's like, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. But uh, he seems to think, like, the way that he said it was, dude, you guys got a dog and one of my favorite players on the whole team. He said, you know, they re-signed Sweat and got rid of Reddick. He said, the truth is, I honestly wish it was the opposite. As much mm. as I like Sweat. So, um, truth is, you know, uh, I'm getting over the Bryce Huff thing. It is what it is. We didn't like it. I made my case. I made my uh gripe very well known but the truth is is Hassan Reddick is an established stud in the NFL we saw their defense uh change last year and uh his numbers declined somewhat he you know really if you look at it like the sack numbers stand out right and it's not egregious I mean he still had more sacks than Bryce Huff granted he played uh what was it 30 something percent or 26 percent more snaps so there's that but it's really the big one for me is his tackle so he's a 60 tackle a year kind of a guy he's he's had up to 80 um you know 60 and then the year before when he went to the pro bowl he was um you know 49 tackles so he think he had like in the 30s this year so i believe in our defense and you can see the excitement on his face and the things that he's mm -hmm. saying he's saying all the right things which is what you would expect someone to say but it looks genuine to me. Like, he's excited. Mm -hmm. You look at this defensive line. He went through all the players. He's like, man, we got Quinnen and JFM and Jim, Jermaine Johnson and Will McDonald. And, and then you got CJ and Quincy. And he's like, he starts almost like smiling, like, holy shit. And then you got Sauce and DJ Reed. He's like, we're going to be sick. You know, and I think what he said was, um, I don't think people are ready for what they're what we're going to be able to do or something along those lines this year. And, uh, and it's exciting to think because you know that the Sala Ulbricht defense, particularly on the defensive line, they've said it numerous times, it's a penetration attack style defensive line. And the phrase they use, like your ass is on fire. Rush mm. like your ass is on fire. And Reddick said, there's nothing he likes more than disrupting the day of the quarterback, right? Actually, I just nothing I like more than that. And that's what you want to hear out of a guy. Now, the compensation, Ryan, I think is absurd for what we got for what we gave is absurd. Uh, a third round pick would be appropriate period. I think for Hassan Reddick, right? Mm -hmm. This year, the fact that it's not even next year, which if we, we know that in 2026, it's going to be a third round pick. It's valuable. But as far as where we stand now, you look at the, the just the, the way that we value it is a third round next year is a fourth round this year. So we're looking at a fifth round pick value for this year that we got Hassan Reddick for. I think it's a slam dunk. And the truth is, is that if we end up letting them go, you might get some compensation back uh, that could even meet that. So, I think it's a it's a no brainer. It came out of left field. I didn't even I wasn't even smelling that one burning. You know what I mean? I had no idea. It came out of nowhere for me. And I think for most people, uh, and I couldn't be happier about bringing him uh, him aboard. No injury concerns, which is nice for this free agent crop. It's nice to have a one or two with no injury concerns. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a slam dunk move, and the compensation was about as good as you could possibly hope. Samantha, thank you so much for the super chat. I'm going to get to your question in just a second. I just want to give you guys my thoughts on the Hassan Reddick trade. Uh, look, I love it. I absolutely think it's a home run move. This is a win now move, 100%. And it, it's it's similar to some of the other moves that we've made this offseason where we're trying to align players within two-year contracts or one-year contracts in the event it you know implodes for this year. There's minimal commitment in the following year or there's, you know, guys with their back against the wall trying to get that next contract. I like that with Tyron Smith. I like that with Morgan Moses. I like that with Hassan Reddick. I think there's a lot to love about it. Obviously, you're you're foregoing the youth aspect that Bryce Huff had, and a lot of us would want Bryce Huff back. But realistically, Bryce Huff and Hassan Reddick, Hassan Reddick is what we hope Bryce Huff will eventually become. And we have Reddick right now in his prime to go all in for a Super Bowl at a cheaper rate than what... Uh, Hassan Reddick or than what 
Bryce Huff is on an annual average salary. Now, the contract is a little goofy because Huss, or, uh, Bryce Huff is only a cap hit of 4.5, then it's like 7.5 next year, 11.5 the year after that, and then uh, I believe it's like $27 million that final year uh, as well. And, oh, we got Mr. O'Leary joining the show. Hey, what's up, O'Leary? Hi. How you doing? How you? What is going on, gentlemen? Sorry for the delay. It's uh, Mama O's birthday, so we just got back from dinner. Um, so happy birthday to Mama O'Leary. And now happy excited birthday. to be here. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Excited to be here and talk some New York Jets football. Hell yeah. I'm just giving my closing thoughts on uh, on the Hassan Reddick trade. Then we'll kick it over to you. And then we've got Samantha with a very generous super chat that we're going to get to. Uh, nice. Love the Love the trade. Obviously, overall, player, I think, is a home run talent. It's what we hope Bryce Huff will eventually turn into, and you're getting him for, you know, that one year back against the wall type of scenario. Now, if he balls out next to Quinn and Williams, next to Jermaine Johnson, next to JFM, then he's going to get a really nice contract next year. Jets are going to get a compensation pick in 2026, like uh, Greenbean was saying. Then there's the thought of, could you resign him? I think they could. I don't think it's going to happen. For me, I think I'm probably willing to franchise tag him at the end of the year uh, and let him play on another year of back against the wall while we go all in. And that way we can kind of, I don't want to say clean our hands, but sort of like step back in 2025 when we assume Rodgers is probably done and the Morstead contract is over, the Zerline contract is over, the Mosley contract is over, uh, the Tyrod Taylor contract, the John Simpson, like all these players on two-year contracts they're all kind of up, and I feel like that would just sort of make sense. We're going to eat a lot of dead cap in 2026, which is why we're going to have to have a rookie quarterback uh, or, or some type of young quarterback on a cheap deal. Uh, but overall, I very much like what we are getting in Hassan Reddick. And you got to imagine the, the sacks are going to look a lot better across the entire defensive line next year with Aaron Rodgers at the helm. I mean, they had so many sacks this past year, and we had a historically bad offense where we didn't even hold a lead. We didn't take an offensive snap with a lead until week four. No, I think it was week was week five. I think it was week five. And it was like the second half of it, like absolutely bonkers that we didn't take an offensive snap with a lead until that point. So Aaron Rodgers comes back. Hassan Reddick joins this elite defensive line. We got four first round picks, Quinn and Williams, Jermaine Johnson. You got Hassan Reddick and you got Javon Kinlaw. Like, obviously, Kinlaw's, you know, a lot more projection for where he could be. But this is a very high potential type of defensive line, especially with, uh, you know, Kinlaw, who was trending up at the end of last year. And some 49ers fans were a little upset that he was going to, you know, wind up losing him at the end of the season. So I'm I'm all about this trade. I really like it. Matt, I want to hear your thoughts on the Hassan Reddick trade. Yeah, I was excited about it. I, I thought, like, I knew... Hassan Reddick was going to get dealt, but it felt like the Jets came out of nowhere. Like it wasn't, we didn't get a leak like, hey, the Jets are kicking the tires on Hassan Reddick. It was just one day in the afternoon on a Friday, boom, Hassan Reddick is a New York Jet. So that kind yeah. of came out of the blue, but uh, that was a nice surprise. And look, we can get into the, if they made the right decision or the wrong decision with uh, Bryce Huff, all we want. I, you know, I think I made my feelings on it very strong. I would have preferred to keep Bryce Huff, but when looking at other pivot options after losing him, like Jadavion Clowney signs for a two-year deal and relatively big money in Carolina, and then the Jets give up a, a third-round pick in three drafts from now, like you got to go through the 2024 draft, which hasn't happened yet, 2025, and then a mid-round pick in 2026. Uh, and this aligns, as you said, with the Jets' go-for-it window this year and potentially next year if they sign him to a new deal. But... I'm really excited. He's a very, very, very productive edge rusher. Double-digit sacks each of the last four years. Uh, fifth in the league in sacks over the last five years. Uh, some of it with Bryce Huff is a little bit projection, right? Like he's 25 years old, just entering his prime. I, I think he can be like what Hassan Reddick has been over the last few years. But with a guy like Reddick, you know what he is. Even if he doesn't, he might not have the longevity that Bryce Huff is, is going to have at this point, right? Like Huff at 25 probably has, we'll say four or five good years left. I don't know if Hassan Reddick has that, but again, the Jets are going for a one or two year run with him. So um, I, I like the pivot. I don't really care about the 2026 third round pick. I don't see a way it turns into a second, uh, not because I don't think he's getting 10 sacks, but I don't think he's getting on the field 68% of the time. I think it would be closer to 60, but I, I'm excited to watch him on this team. Yeah, the first time I saw the trade pop through, I thought it was an or 
And I was like, well, I don't mind giving up a second round pick if he's getting north of 10 sacks. And then someone was like, no, 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 that's an and. I'm like, oh, words are hard for Ryan right now. This is yeah. really good. <laughs> I like that. I was a little bummed seeing the Clowney contract. Two years, 24 million. I was like, man, like, I, I, sure, it's a little bit more than I was hoping to pay him. And then, like, you know, then they were talking about, like, hey, Hassan Reddick's going to get a new deal with the New York Jets. And he turned down 18 to 20 million and, the, you know, wants 25. I was like, ah, I don't love that. <laughs> that is yeah. totally, you know, not where I'm feeling. So I like the, I think it's a one year, $15 million deal is what Reddick's on. And I think that's uh, spot on. I think this is a, an absolutely good move to roll with. Uh, Samantha jumps in. Thank you so much, Samantha, for the $50 super chat. She says, do you think we will trade up for a wide receiver? This is one of my favorite type of discussions because of the Hassan Reddick trade, the Tyron Smith signing, the Morgan Moses trade. Like these are all one year deals that you're going all in for for this season. Best case scenario, I shouldn't say best case scenario, but I guess best case scenario, everyone stays healthy and you're using all your assets towards starters or, or premier playing time. And if you were to trade up in the draft for a wide receiver, I think that is like the cherry on top of all in type moves. And it, I mean, it's not without its risks for sure. And if you can, you know, say we're going to give up a, a next year's 2025 pick to move up, probably a little bit easier to swallow, especially if you're Joe Douglas, who may not have 2025, uh, you know, draft to, to work with if things go south. But I would I would consider it based on on the parameters of the trade. I would think number five is probably where you'd have to get up to to make it worth it. Um, I do think quarterbacks are going to go one, two, three, four, and then it's just a matter of the Chargers. Do they want to take the wide receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors, or do they want to trade out? And you know, as Greenbean and I were talking last night, Greenbean was saying, "Hey, this is one of those situations where it's like I might take the best wide receiver. So you got to make me not want to take the best wide receiver at number five. And I feel like it, it's it's tough to imagine us getting up that high and then the Giants not taking a receiver if the top four quarterbacks go. So like I I find it a little unlikely that it's going to happen, but Malik Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr., either one of them would be absolutely wild. And to a lesser extent, maybe like a small trade up for a Roma Dunze, maybe just in front of the Bears. Um, I think it's on the table. I don't think it's it's totally off. It may not cost you a crazy ton once you get down to like the Falcons pick. Uh, maybe a, you know, a late round pick swap or something along those lines or mid round pick swap, I guess. But uh, O'Leary, I'll go to you first. What are your thoughts on trading up for a wide receiver? I agree with you that I don't think it's crazy uh, likely similar. Like we, we get on the, we get on the Bauer boys a lot because they are a very vocal group and they think that like it's their way or, or that's it. But I feel like there's another group where anytime you mention just the thought of trading up, they're like, no, you can't possibly trade up and, and go you know, really push your chips for the table. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Like, I, I think it would be really fun to have Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors on this team. Like, I get it. I know we all love our draft picks and we all love our prospects. And I'm not saying it's even the most likely or my favorite scenario. But if we're sitting there on April 25th at the main event and the, the ticker comes up, pops up green, a trade, a Jets now on the clock at pick five, are we not all going to go ballistic and get excited? We're going to lose our marbles. Right. Right. Like, the, the thought of either uh marvin harrison jr or malik neighbors with garrett wilson and with mike williams and aaron Rodgers and Brees hall in this offense i get it you could be a team o-line all you want you could be team trade down all you want i get it i think you can make really good uh cases for that to be the move for the jets but at the end of the day if you're gonna sit there and pout because the jets are going for it and trading up for an elite level you know prospect in marvin harrison or malik neighbors for this offense I don't know what to tell you at that point. Greenby, what about you? How would you feel if the Jets made a move up for a wide receiver? We obviously uh, brought in Roma Dunze, or we're bringing in Roma Dunze tomorrow for a top 30 visit. Yeah, I saw that. Um, so, uh, number one, I agree with what Matt said. Like, whether or not that's what I want to do, if, it, if all of a sudden it switches from the Chargers to the Jets, do 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 you know that whole shit <laughs> and it's the jets i'm my heart's gonna pick up i'm just gonna be wondering one thing because if the quarterbacks go top four you're getting the first non-quarterback taken so are they trading up for marvin harrison do they like neighbors more 
or do they still love Joe Alt as the future, the the left tackle for the next ten to fifteen years? Let's say twelve years. Um, and um, I think if they traded up and took Alt, even though a month ago that's what we all wanted, uh, every draft you did, if you took anybody but Alt, everybody got mad at you. Uh, but I think that's changed somewhat. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I I'll tell you, man. I would lose my shit if they did that. Because like you said, you know that they're going for it. They see the guy that they want. They're willing to pay. The one thing I'll say is it's not going to be Daniel Jeremiah. We're not going to be throwing them a 2025th second to get it. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I, I – I don't think that's nearly enough uh, to get up from 10 to 5 uh, in this draft. I just don't think so. If we, if we pulled that off for next year's second, jumping up to, to the top five – in the draft, I would be ecstatic to come away with a Marvin Harrison Jr. Can you imagine Marvin Harrison Jr., G-Dubs, uh, obviously Mike Williams, Conklin, Brees Hall, with Aaron Rodgers? I would. I don't know what. To, I wouldn't know what to say. But again, I think we'd have to see or say goodbye to our third, and maybe next year's second. Or if you're going to give a whole bunch of picks out of next year's draft, or maybe you can give them Zach and Lazard, and who else don't we want? Is anybody else want? <laughs> <know? laughs> <laughs> oh geez yeah you know um yeah just throw max mitchell in there and say hey you know what we'll even throw brownlee on there maybe yeah, we're uh, gonna resign cobb just so you can have him <laughs> right we'll give you cobby is he yours no we'll sign him though real quick and send him your way <laughs> hey you won't uh, even see it coming He's like, yeah come back yeah. with your best buddy oh sorry we own your rights you're off to the west coast yeah that all said i don't think we do it i i don't th- i think there's far too much talent uh and potential value. I think there's so much talent that you could either give up picks to go get one guy, or you could potentially trade back, add picks, and still get a guy that's going to fit in. Because we're not looking for wide receiver one. Sure, we'll take it. You know what I mean? We'll take a Marvin Harrison or neighbors alongside Garrett Wilson. But you don't need that. That's, that's you know, high-class thoughts right there so you could slide back or you could just stay at 10 and get Romo Dunje that's going to be fine for your wide receiver three for this year um or you can slide back a few spots maybe still get a Bowers or an Odunze or you can go a a, a, a Fatanu you can go whoever you know you could there's so much there dude if you slid back with the Raiders or something got an extra third so I don't know if I put that shit on the scale I would probably say a trade up is unlikely in my opinion. Yeah. I want to touch on the one point that you brought up with Joe Alt. Like if we trade up to number five and the name is Joe Alt, there's going to be a little bit of disappointment, I think from the fan base because the offensive line isn't quite the need, especially when you can get offensive tackle to whoever that is on your board at 10, most likely. So to trade up for for Alt, while it would be really like, okay, cool, we got our guy locked in, and it it could be, I don't want to call it necessary evil, but moving up for a wide receiver that can help you immediately because Marvin Harrison Jr. is one of those players that I consider having such a high floor that he's going to come into the NFL and be able to produce right away, and it's exactly what you would want in an all-in year. It would be the the epitome of giving Rodgers the best weapon you possibly can in the final years of his career the way Green Bay never spent any first round picks on offensive talent. So I, I think it's it's fascinating to see. Matt, what would your thoughts be if the Jets selected Alt at the top of the draft in a trade up? I wouldn't be mad at it at all. Like I would be surprised because I like you said, I, I if they were gonna move up, I would think for it would be for a weapon. But like, I don't know, Morgan Moses at five and a half million, like you're gonna be the swing tackle now and a really mm-hmm. damn good swing tackle. And you know, you have Joe Walt could play right tackle his first year with Tyron Smith, uh, Smith at left tackle. If there's an injury and Smith misses time every single year for the last you decade, all over. literally, like it, it's inevitable. And if you get 13 games out of him this year, I think we'll be happy with that. Yeah. But that means the other four, you got to have a good plan. And if your plan is we're going to slide Joe freaking Alt over from right to left tackle and then plug in Morgan Moses, that's a pretty good plan. I, I, I would sign up for that. So, um, Again, I, I don't think it's crazy likely they trade up to begin with, but if they do, I would think it'd be for a receiver. But if Joe Alt is the name that's going to be called, I don't know how you could get mad at that one because he's going to be a damn good football player. 
Boys and girls, if you're just hopping in, make sure you hit that like button for every 25 likes we get on this video. <clears throat> we are gonna pick a t-shirt qualifier at the end of this stream that's gonna win a shirt or a hat or a mug or a pillow or maybe even Hello. a jersey, potentially. Lots of stuff going on. And if you're listening to it after the fact, don't forget to leave a timestamp comment down below. I do have three trade options, trade down options that we're gonna get into in just a little bit here. Uh, I wanna get your guys' thoughts about it. It's it, it, They're all trade downs and they're all like not quite perfect. So I wanna, I wanna pick your brains on it and see if there's some type of consensus that maybe the, uh, the fan base can come to. And I don't think that's gonna happen because no one wants anything uh, the same. <laughs> Love Retro comes in with a super chat, says, in memory of the twenty uh, the 2000 NFL draft, which four players would you pick if you had four first round picks this year? Um, do you, Green Bean or Matt, Ooh. know which picks we had in that draft? Because I think Are knowing the, the same number. Picks? The same I think numbers? That's what, let's do that. Yeah, let's do right. whatever those four numbers were. Okay, what ready? We 12, 13, 18, and 20, 30, right? Isn't that what we had? Oh, close. 12, 13, 18, and 27. Ah. Seven. All right. So I'll go first. If Not we bad. had the 12, 13, 18, and 27 picks, I would All take right. – well, so I guess it depends how it falls because we know the Jets are sitting at 10 and what we would potentially do there. Uh, so if I'm flip-flopping, let's say, the Broncos in front of us, um, I'm going – Odunze, Bowers, 18, I'm taking Fuwaga or, uh, you know, whichever tackle falls just a little bit further. And then at 27, ooh, maybe a Graham Barton. Go, like, extra, yeah. like, so you have a tackle, and then you have a guy that can play all the interior positions, and then you have your tight end, and you have a wide receiver. I mean, maybe you consider, at that point, with four first-round picks, you might consider drafting a Penix. Or something yeah, like I, that. I was just gonna say that you could, you but could it might have to be higher. It. Like, it, if he was there at twenty-seven, that would be my selection, I think. But I feel like you might have to take him earlier. I think he's gonna go higher than people expect. Green Bean, I'll throw we this one exactly, to you first. What would be yeah, your sorry. four picks? Yeah, since I can't keep cutting you off, might as well go first, right? Um, sorry about that. Um, again, okay. and, and another I, thing. I do it to you all the time, so it's totally yeah, fine. No, um. You know, I think you would have if you. I, I was thinking the same thing. So you could grab if Penix is is in that middle. You're not. He's not going to make it to 27. The truth is, I think that if somebody is willing to trade up to 10, Penix is in play. That's mm. what I. I think it would be for Penix. Truth is, if it wasn't for those damn knee injuries, he's my QB one in this class. Mm. Um, I I think he's an amazing talent. Uh, very exciting player, especially somebody that if you're bringing in, very similar to when we drafted Chad, we had Vinny Testaverde here. He was the incumbent starter. Uh, you know, there was no real no real worry. Chad, he was coming in to sit behind Testaverde for a minute, and and he did, and I, and I think it worked out really, really well. So I think that middle, if he's there, if we had 18 and Penix is on the board, you pull the trigger on Penix, and then that mm. gives you – 27 you can do that if Graham Barton's there you can take mm -hmm. um you know you can go an interior guy uh there you know a Van Pran or you know or um you know uh Christian I Jones I, you know it, but not 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 Jones who's the well, I'm losing I can't be losing my fucking brain here um but anyway but you could also switch gears and it would justify maybe going with something that you need like a safety you know, getting yeah. the top safety in the draft. Mm -hmm. um, you could you could justify that with four uh, first round You could go Kool-Aid McKinstry there, a guy that plays corner that might translate to safety. Like, that's a valuable pick with a DJ Reed going into the final year of his contract and, you know, two one-year guys on in the, in the safety room. I agree. Yeah, so that's – so I would say, all right, up top, yeah, you're definitely grabbing. So we're at 12 – so if Odunze is there, you grab him. Uh, if Bowers is there, you grab him. No, no problem. Uh, you could even, you know, you grab one of them. Like if one's gone, you grab the other one, and then you pull together that and like uh, a Latham or a Fuanga. You know, whoever's there. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it's just it's mm. so robust what you could do with four. Mm, you know, it's like everything changes. 
you get all excited, all the options you can do. But I would say like probably like an Odunze, let's say Fatanu, right? Yep. You, you do that, then you grab Penix, and then you go with Cooper DeGene, uh mm -hmm. and at twenty seven. That's what I say you do. Because then That'd you be still got your third, you get your what's that? That would be a wild draft. I like that a lot. I would sign up for that. Yeah. Matt, what about you? What would you do with those four picks? So I like I like the point that you guys make about the quarterback. And I think that's one that's very well could be in play. But I'm going to go slightly different directions so we don't do the same ones. But what if you do something like Bowers, Fuaga, Brian Thomas Jr., and like Tyler Newbin, the, the safety from Minnesota. So you get mm. like that final piece for the defense. You add two weapons. You add a versatile offensive lineman who could play guard or tackle. Uh, if you have the four, one of them probably should be a quarterback. But if you're just going to go like we want to go, you know, balls to the wall, go all in and try to fill out like all our last minute holes and uh, depth here, I think that would be the way that I would go about doing it in that spot. Safety is really the final piece on the defense. You add a receiver, you add a weapon in Bowers, and you add an offensive lineman who could play guard or tackle. I think that's the move. That was a really fun hypothetical. Thank you, Love Retro, yeah. by the way. That was a fun one. Yeah, that was good. That was fun. I like Let's that Let's Crew comes in and says, first reach player to be drafted and what team? The first reach player is probably going to be considered whoever the fifth quarterback is. Like, yep, that Bo would be Nicks. my guess. Yep. I, I don't. Bo Nix was going to be my answer. I, I think Bo Nix is going to oh. go higher than he should. I agree with Green Bean. Penix would be quarterback one or two for me without the injuries. So if if there's a reach for him, it's a little more justifiable in my eyes. Um, but I'll say Denver jumps the gun for Bo Nix, and that's that's the first reach. Uh, Matt, I'll throw it to you first. Damn, that's a that's a really good one because mm -hmm. I, I don't Bo Nix I don't think is a first round quarterback. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go a different quarterback. I'm gonna say JJ McCarthy. I don't think mm -hmm. he's a top five like draft guy. If he went somewhere in the middle of the first round, that's fine to me. But I don't think he's kind of like when the Giants took Daniel Jones. What was that five six years ago? It was like mm -hmm. yeah, he's probably a first rounder. But then he ends up going sixth overall, and everyone's like. What? That, where did that come from? McCarthy's had a lot of hype behind him, but I don't know if I view him as like a top five quarterback draft pick like the rest of the, the league kind of does. Greenbean, what about you? First reach player. I I agree it would be a – I think it would be – because that's what we see every year, you know, not every year, but a lot of years. You see it like they just – you know the quarterback it's that positional value it trumps everything else and especially teams that feel like they need one they're willing to kind of forego any concerns and i think bo nix if he was if he i think if he's taken in the first especially the top half of the first i think it's a reach but i also i think you were alluding to this ryan mm -hmm. i also think as much as i like Penix, if somebody trades up to 10 or somewhere in that neighborhood for Penix, I think it's a reach. The, I mean, the guy, you're betting on him, and I think he's worthy of betting on, but I wouldn't use my prime capital this year on a guy who's had multiple severe injuries already. Um, I think it's four season-ending injuries. It's the two knees yeah, plus the, the throwing shoulder. There's a shoulder, yeah. The, yeah, so it's... um. It's just it's it's a lot. It's concerning. Now maybe teams that aren't that don't have the Jets bullshit luck. Maybe they're like ah, well, you no, know, just root for the best. Maybe they can do that. I don't know what it feels like to be a Steelers fan, or they're like ah, it'll work. <laughs> like I don't know what that's like. You know what I mean? Uh, we're like fuck that. <laughs> yeah, it must be miraculous uh, to like have things work in your favor. We get Aaron Rodgers, and when he makes four plays after mm -hmm. that entrance. You know, it's just the craziest thing. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. I think a quarterback's going to be the first reach. Uh, let me let me look. Let me acclimate myself with a big board. I just want to real quick look at a big board and just see if names pop out here. I'm going to uh, rattle this one off real quick. Jack saying yeah, uh, with a $5 super chat says, we should trade back with the Packers and get their second round pick. 
So the Packers are sitting at pick 25, <laughs> and their second round pick is pick number 41 from the Jets. Yeah, the there you yeah. go. Yeah. Get back. That's well, they also have 58, so I just wanted to clarify. Ah, ah. 41. Wouldn't would that be, be funny, though? That'd if be we got if they if they got ten and we kept our second, that would be like exactly what they wanted initially <laughs> for, for the trade. Um, the only difference is we get twenty five out of it too. That's yeah. the only difference. Who cares? Yeah, that's, that's a big trade up. I don't know what that value is offhand. I don't think I have the trade value chart up. Let me. I'll, I'll right, look it up. All right. Yeah, I want to hear what that would be. Um, I don't particularly love that trade, but we're going to go into a few trade scenarios that I have. Uh, so we'll get back to this one, Jack, but I have something very similar uh, as well. Um, okay. You got you, 720 and 490 for 41 and uh, pick yeah, it's number. 12, what is that, 1210? So they need yeah, to throw 12, another 10. 90 on there. Mm. Yeah. So the the Jets would need to throw another 90 on there. So eh, they're No, no, up. they need to throw another 90 on there. Oh, no, you're right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's like a third so, round pick, I think. Like a future third yeah, so, or something. Well, they need second. to give us 90 is like, let's see it's what like the close third, I think. Clo yeah. So they have number 91, which is 136. So they could give us that and we could give them like a sixth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that that, that, yeah, that's what it would be. Or we could give them Alan Lazard back. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Jack Wilson. Take it. Peter S comes into the super chat. Thank you so much. Says JD loves more around, more around based upon how the board falls. Uh, loves to move around. Sorry, Ooh, yeah, based yeah, upon yeah. how the how the board falls. I believe no matter what we add, talent, offensive line, wide receiver, especially in the third through fifth rounds. Yeah, I do think we're going to be active moving around. I don't know which direction it's going to be. I would think back just because we don't have that second round pick. But if we stick and pick a ten, I do think there's a good chance we're moving up into the second to try and get an impact player in some capacity j boy comes in with the super chat thanks so much says trade back with las vegas get a second take brock bowers at 13 that would be an absolute home run of a move now that's the scenario that i would love to see happen because the broncos don't have a second round pick and i believe the broncos third round pick let me just verify this real quick yeah the broncos third round pick is one pick in front of vegas um because sometimes they, they alternate based on records and stuff like that um, but yeah, it's, it's one pick in front of them. So if Denver offers us a third for the 12th pick and we say, Hey Vegas, you got to give up your second round pick, pick number 44, and you get to leapfrog your division rival. I'm a hundred percent on board with that. No questions asked. I do that all damn day. Uh, Matt, yeah. your thoughts on this trade back. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, I, I think that would be a home run. If you're, you're sliding back a few spots, you're picking up an, another second round pick. You still get a guy in Brock Bowers who a lot of people want you to take at pick 10. I think that's a good move. Greenbean, you like this trade too? It, well, it's a slam dunk. I mean, it's a, it's an overpay on their side of things. But again, mm. if you're trying to get a quarterback, like that's the thing. It's a, It doesn't all break down evenly. Like there's no trade in the world that justifies three firsts. There's no point fucking value mm. chart that says, oh, that's worth three firsts and a third, you know, that kind of a thing. But it happens all the time. So it depends on how badly they want it and what the market is at that time. So like you said, if they think Denver is going to get their guy, let's say it's Michael Penix or whatever, J.J. McCarthy slides or whatever it is, and they want him, and we're talking about, hey, it's a third. Really, it's like a third in value, but Denver's going to take your guy. That's your division rival, like you said. Mm. All it's going to cost you is your second-round pick. Dude, that is a slam dunk for us because then that 10 is a quarterback. You only have 11 and 12 to worry about. And then you're going to get probably a good chance to get the guy that you want anyway. So that's what we call squeezing the lemon, Ryan. That's how you manage a draft. You squeeze the value. If the player that you want mm -hmm. is a reach like a Will McDonald at 15, which is why when we looked at our draft room, our war room last year, and it was just mm -hmm. silent. Every time they showed it, everybody was just staring at the computer screens or just kind of moping around. That's what they were doing. They were trying to squeeze the lemon. We can get Will McDonald at 20. We know we can. And they couldn't get the trade back. They were still probably going to take him. 
but you know, once uh, Broderick Jones was off the board, but uh, they weren't able to, so they took the guy anyway. Which, if that is their guy, I still think it's a stupid pick. That's what you want to do. But if you have the opportunity to squeeze the lemon, get that second, back up a few spots, and still have a good chance of getting your guy, you do it nine out of ten times. So the one thing that I'm really interested—I shouldn't say one thing, but I'm curious to see what team is going to be picking at 11. Is it going to be the Cardinals or is it going to be the Chargers? And what player are they eyeballing at that pick? Because both teams could use wide receiver. Uh, Both teams, to some degree, could use offensive linemen. DJ Humphreys tore his ACL week 17, and the Chargers could use a right tackle. So, like, there is a little bit of a possibility of whatever that team is taking some player that we might like. But there's going to be so many good players at 10 that we're going to have some options to to kind of play with there. Uh, Phil comes in with a super chat. says, trade up for a top three wide receiver, my first choice. Second choice, how about a trade to 18-ish? So trading down with, I believe that's the Bengals. Uh, to get an offensive lineman. That should get you a second round pick based on the value chart. Uh, get a second round, uh, get a second, package a third to get back into the bottom of the first to pick Lad McConkey. Wow. Um, I don't... Wait a minute. Wait up. He's saying trade your third and whatever second you get from the Bengals. So the Bengals are picking 49. So it would be 49 and pick 72 to get into the okay. back end of the first. I don't know if that's enough. 49 is 410 and 72 is close 230 that's 230. ours 230 for that that would get you to pick 29 wow okay i like that that's a cool Detroit. option um i don't know i like the amount of players that are going to be available in the second and third so i don't know if i want to trade back into the first necessarily yeah. But again, you look back at the Brees Hall selection and how much more would you be willing to give up right now to get into the first, to have that extra year of contract for Brees. So I don't know. I like the quantity of good players versus maybe whatever player you're going to get at the back end of the first. I think that would be my preference. Bean, what do you think? I also, I mean, you can see Phil's looking to trade up. He wants, he wants mm-hmm. to... He wants to use some gas this year. And I and I applaud oh, yeah. that. I, I I do. I don't know. And as much as I like Lad McConkey, I don't know if I'm doing that. Like there's a there are enough guys in that. Like, so if I'm sitting there and I have what was it? What pick was it? Forty pick forty nine. So like middle of the second round. Yeah. You could stay right there, keep your third and get Ricky Pierce all, all day long. And so, uh, according, I mean, to, uh, according to Tankathon, the players that are selected right around the Bengals second round pick that might be of interest for the Jets, um, they have Xavier Worthy, 46, Troy Franklin, 47, Patrick Paul, 48, Xavier Leggett, 51. Fucking A. Um, yeah, there's, there's some really like good those. ones. Who doesn't like that group of names, huh? Leggett? Holy shit. Cooper BB 60. Troy There's Franklin's another names. one. He's he's uh I think he's a little bit underrated. Uh he, he might he reminds go me of Deshaun Jackson. Him. Like just a burner that can get down the field. Not great in contested catches, but just a he flies. Yeah, Malachi Corley. Well, he's more like a third. But uh, who else they got? Where do you see that on Tankathon? Oh, there, is that their mock? go to mock draft? And they have the first. They have two rounds. Actually, no, they got three two rounds, rounds up. Three, three rounds. baby. Okay, oh, there it is. Yeah, I like there that. It. I like that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Ricky Pearsall, sixty-two. Roman Wilson, sixty-four. Christian Haynes, Roman sixty-three. Wilson. Yeah, dude. So a lot of good players in that second round. I'm a big fan of that. That uh, <laughs> particular spot. So who knows? Yep. So Lots that's the thing. So as much as I like Lad McConkey, I'm a big Lad McConkey guy. I was saying it was that he was a stud when it wasn't cool to say he was. A stud. I was getting laughed at. You know what it was? Uh, you just think it's fun to say the name, or you want to relive in <laughs> Phil McConkey. Phil McConkey's before your guy's time, right? For the Giants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You remember Phil McConkey? No. Oh, 
Let me tell you, Phil McConkie's dream here is he was a little tiny fellow with a big mustache, looked like Ned Flanders, right? So <laughs> but he was really good. He was just like one of those guys, just a football player. Like he just does everything well. Like Parcells mm-hmm. loved him, right? Uh, his dream was to catch a, a, a touchdown in the Super Bowl. And he ended up doing it because I think it was Bavaro, Mark Bavaro, an amazing tight end for the Giants. It hit, it, it, I think it was him. It hit him in the hands and he dropped it and Phil McConkey was on the ground, like rolling on the ground right now and he caught it. It just landed in it. his stomach. And he was like, ah! he ran around. He was like, it was like just uh, as much as I fucking hated that era of the Giants, man, I hated him. But looking back, Anyway, the people say they accuse me of being uh, just wanting to like relive Phil McConkey days, but that's not true. I actually like Lad McConkey a lot, but I don't think enough to use my third to trade up for him. I'd rather take uh, Xavier Leggett and mm-hmm. and get um, you know and get uh, you know Cooper Beebe or one of the guys offense interior offensive line in the third. I think that's more valuable than just a Lad McConkey, especially. If we got a wide receiver up top, but even Matt, if- what do you what do you think about trading second and a third that you pick up to get back into the first? I think it's worth it because you would still have your two fourth round picks in this scenario, right? So, mm-hmm. yeah, you don't you don't get any swings in the second and um, the third round. But what if you package your two fourths together and want to move up, like? I think the the Jets have a lot of day three picks, and I think if they package some of them together, so let's see, 72 and 39 is how many? That is 111, which could get you... Top of the third? The back, back of the third. Back of the so third. So package those together and move up like 20 spots. So then you get two first-round picks, a third-round pick, a sixth, and two sevenths, something like that. Mm. I, I, I think... Len McConkey would have an immediate impact, and I, I like Ricky Pearsall and some of these other guys, uh, but I'm more confident in in Lad coming in and giving you an immediate impact. So I, I think I would I think I would do it. Um, it's a little unorthodox, but I like it. Crossfire comes in five spot says I say trade up to five and we take a kicker with pick five. Could you imagine the oh, flex Jeff's like, oh yeah, we're, we're already lock stocked and loaded. We're gonna take a backup kicker at five. <laughs> <laughs> Alan comes in. Alan says Aaron Rodgers made $81 from performance-based pay last year from the NFL, according to Schefter. Discuss A Rod made $20.33 per snap pre-tax. Now remember, he's getting paid so much money, he's probably losing like a nice chunk of that. <laughs> I don't think he actually got the $81. Uh that was like just in ugh. I mean, I guess I get why Schefter tweeted out he's gonna get the engagement. But it's like, I'd rather just not see it. I don't need to relive any bit of last year at all. Turn the page, baby. Matt, any thoughts on the $81? Of, of course, of course. There's uh, thousands of guys they could choose from. Other players who got hurt early in the year. But no, you got to point and laugh at the Jets who lost their star quarterback four plays into their season. And then he went on podcasts every week and said some things. And then it became a story every single week. So yeah, that, that's the one that they got to they gotta make fun of. Yeah, Not to but mention you know Aaron Rodgers says, lose my number, and then that's Aaron yeah. <laughs> Schefter that's comes right. up and like, oh, here's a number for you. Yeah, That's yeah. the uh, – well, you know, the thing is what Schefter is forgetting is that he already made $35 million on top of it. So this mm. is, you know, that performance thing, which I don't fully understand. I never really looked into it, paid much attention to it. But the $81, Aaron Rodgers isn't sitting there like, oh, fuck, I blew it. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't care. He has his money. Um, he doesn't need this. So the fact that it's a story, this is what the story really should read. It's amazing, but I'm still butthurt over that. That's what I the headline love- should read. Imagine it's Aaron amazing- Rodgers donates $81.30 or like $81 to like Schefter's charity of choice or something like that. Like, I don't even need it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> something there you like go. Yeah, something okay. funny like that. But that's really what it is. I mean, you want to, like you said, it's more about, it's about clicks, but he's thrown out a lot of little little remarks about Aaron Rodgers this season. And mm-hmm. you can clearly see what it is. I mean, uh, Schefter's completely butthurt over it. Aaron Rodgers rents more space for free in Schefter's head than is, than is really uh, healthy for Schefter. He should really go to a doctor 
and uh, and talk it out, man. He really should go see somebody and say, I don't know why I can't get this guy out of my head. He just lives in here. I mean, this is such a non-story. It's not like the guy was going to make $35 million but only made 81 Because That's a different story. You know what I mean? That's a totally different story. This is just, who gives a shit? I mean, really, does anybody really care? I know Alan doesn't care. He put it up there because he thinks it's funny, but nobody really gives a shit. So that's what it really is. The Schefter's headline should say, it's amazing, and I know that you can't believe it, but Aaron Rodgers lives rent-free in my, in, in my head, and I still, my butthole still hurts over that comment. I can't take it. When, when he read the trade-off for Aaron Rodgers initially, it was such an awkwardly cringy kind of, like, thing. It was almost like he didn't expect to, like, get the news. And he was like, oh, oh, oh God, uh, the Jets get, uh, trading for Aaron Rodgers. They give up a first-round pick this year. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And then people, like, start losing their mind because they, you know, he's trying to say yeah. that there was a trade of 15 and 13 and, like, all this stuff. The whole Schefter stuff from the last year has just been, like, kind of irritating. Matt, your thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say, he completely butchered it when he was like, mm -hmm. they trade a first-round pick and then let the other guy on ESPN was like, I yeah. knew it! I told you they were going to have to... And then he's like, wait, no, but they're getting 15 back. And it's like, oh, all right, they moved oh, down. Different. Yeah, very yeah, different. And you know what sucks about it is that... Did you guys ever see the Adam Schefter 9-11 story? Did you guys ever see that? Yeah. No, like what's with, that about? Well, well his wife... Her, it's really touching. It, it literally brought tears to my eyes. And I just thought, what a good guy, you know, like, mm -hmm. so, um, Adam Schefter, to, to make it short, Adam Schefter's current wife was married to someone who died in the nine 11 attacks. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 uh, I, I forget if it's a, if it's one child, maybe two, but they, he ended up meeting her a couple years later, and long story short, they, they, they fell for each other, got married. But Adam Schefter lives in that family as if that man is still present in the house. Hmm. So, like, he honors him. Like, he, uh, he's, he's completely cool with, like, the, you know, the, her ex-husband's kind of memory being a huge part of their life. And he mm -hmm. honors them and, and he, you know, like the kids, he never tries to like, you know, um, you know, he never gets like, uh, like be second dad, almost just kind of, yeah, like, you know what I mean? That like that, like, well, like, come on, when is, when am I going to be the guy? It, it's like, it, it was a mm -hmm. really touching story. And, and it's a shame that he's such a little pussy with this Aaron Rodgers <laughs> thing. Because I, I actually want to like the guy. <laughs> he's a Long Island guy too. He's from Valley stream, I think. Oh yeah. Uh, See, that's amazing. Yeah. What a, what a, you know, but it's true. I mean, if you can't see it, man, why, like you said, why isn't he talking about all these other people? No, he's talking about Aaron Rodgers, who, by the way, made $35 million. It's like. But it was the cheapest of the performance bonuses. Ooh. So he's got that little shield of like, well, I would have said whoever was the cheapest. It just so happened to be Aaron Rodgers, even though I've never mm -hmm. heard this dished out before. Even though uh, we've never seen this. Right. This has never been a story. Yeah. Do, every year, do we talk about the lowest fucking NFL performance value guy? Never. Nope. I've never heard of it. Knifey Spoony comes in with his member super chat says, do you think we get the max number of primetime games this year or will the NFL be scared after last year? Also, do we want primetime open or do we have PTSD? So I don't think we're going to have the max primetime games. I do think we are going to have a lot of standalone games. I think we get the Black Friday game again. I think that's going to be tradition now. I think we definitely get a London game. So that's two earlier games that are going to be standalone. And then I think the Jets probably get like three primetime games. You'll, you'll, you'll have the Thursday night game, obviously. So there's going to be three right there from that. So then maybe you have a Monday night and a Sunday night round you out to five uh, standalone games would be my guess. Matt, what are your thoughts? I was going to say four or five. What did they have last year with, with Black Friday? Was it technically six? I think that was six, yeah. We had Thursday. We had two Sundays. Two, I think it was two Sundays and two Mondays, right? Y yes. Yes, because, right, you had the Can Kansas City was Sunday night. You had Vegas the, was Sunday the, night. Yep, and then the you Bills had the Bills Monday night and the Chargers, Chargers Monday, Monday night. night. Yeah, I'm going to say probably five. Mm -hmm. uh, man, I, I'm going to do it. I said it last year, but give me all the Sunday at ones, baby. Put them right in my veins. CBS, Sunday, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard, American. 
do it that way. Green Beam, what do you think? How many primetime games are we getting? I hope we get none. That's what I hope. <laughs> but I do, I do think the NFL uh, is not going to give us the max. They they mm. they're gonna and, and if they do give us a couple, it's gonna be front front loaded. That's my honest opinion. I mean, mm. Last year's Buffalo game, no matter what happened during the game, it was like the highest rated game in NFL history up to that point. So, you know, they did fine. It's not you know the injury aside, they did fine. Everybody watched it, the big comeback and everything. Monday night, nine eleven, it was all very well done. I wouldn't be surprised to see us get that again. Or if not that, like week two or whatever it might be, I think we'll get a couple. But I don't see us getting the max. I don't see us them doing to us what they did last year because, dude, the bottom falls out around these parts. That's just what mm-hmm. happens. Boys and girls, if you're just hopping in here, make sure you hit that like button. Every 25 likes we get on this video, we're gonna select a T-shirt, jersey, hat, mug, pillow qualifier that we're gonna give away at the end of this stream. So all you gotta do is hang around in the stream with us. And then if you're listening after the fact, leave that timestamp comment down below and you'll get qualified for next week's giveaway. Boys and girls, we do have a sponsor of the channel, so I do want to recognize them. If you guys have not checked it out, Aura is an absolutely awesome, awesome app for your security. If you're tired of getting all these spam emails and your passwords getting leaked out all over the place, I have loved Aura. They gave us a little free subscription to it to, to give it a good test run so we could actually speak intelligently about it. And I love, I love it. I don't have any more spam or much less spam than I had prior to using all this. I had a VPN. I could get rid of my Nord VPN to keep Aura's VPN. So I'm saving a few bucks there. So for 12 bucks a month, not too shabby. You can try Aura for 14 days free. Link is in the description down below. If you do that, it helps us out, gives us a little bit of uh you know, notoriety with Aura. Maybe they want to continue sponsoring the channel. Help us out. We help you out with some great deals. Uh, so make sure you check out Aura for all your security needs. Uh, let's hop over here. John Moore comes in. John says, can we play in the Super Bowl 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on CBS? He's talking yes. my language, baby. He's <laughs> talking my... I want the old pregame show. I want them to bring Bill Cower out of retirement. Put Tony Gonzalez back up there. The whole old crew from the 2000s. Mm-hmm. Pop him back up. Maybe get uh, you know, a F- Phil Nance and uh, mm. or Jim Nance and Phil Sims rather. Come, Phil Sims comes back. They put him in instead of Tony Romo yapping about something. And then we mm. get a good old fashioned one o'clock kickoff Super Bowl. Sign me up. Just not Love CBS. It. CBS from for like all the TV broadcasts, I think Fox does the best presentation yeah. of the game. And then after that, I think Amazon Prime does a really good job. I really love their advanced stats. I didn't love it when it first switched over initially, but watching the game with the um, next gen stats on is is pretty fun. It's almost like watching Madden. The guys I watch with, I watch it with a bunch of like 55 year old dudes like in my neighborhood and we rotate Thursday night football and they do not like the like Madden-esque graphics on the screen. They're like always yelling, oh, why are you doing that? Like, Sorry, I'll turn it off, uh, you know, my bad. But I, I think Amazon does a pretty good job. Matt, if you had to pick yeah. one of the uh, broadcasts, what do you like most? How are we picking against CBS? That's the Jets home station most. We can pick Fox. They play on Fox like once a year. Oh, I know. CBS doesn't show replays, dude. Mm. And the, the, the like actual visual too. Fox tends to have more 1080p, you know, versions of the game i get a lot of 720p when i'm watching cbs yeah i don't know matt i don't know look i'm all about home team and supporting everybody associated with us i bitch about cbs i'm like show us show us every fucking week i do that 15 times well show me the damn penalty what the fuck they don't do it they'd rather show the coach picking his nose or, or you know wiping his face than the replay i don't know why they do it it bothers me so bad i would choose fox every day of the week i don't love fox either but i would i would be happy if that turned out to be the guy the guys showing the jets 1 p.m extravaganza super bowl i would love that shit gang green also says i prefer sunday at one but live in upstate new york in bill's country so jets get few games on the telecast yeah, that's tough. One o'clock game is hard for that region. I went up to school in Binghamton and I did not realize that. I'm thinking, New York, oh, I'm definitely going to get my Jet games when I'm going to school. Meanwhile, there's more Patriot fans and more Bills fans up further north uh, than I 
liked at all. That was absolutely miserable. So not not fun trying to get games at that point, trying to find a lot of streams throughout the, the interwebs on sketchy sites. Uh, AZ Jets says, we need to trade back and take Troy Fotanu. Fotanu. He's going to jack up that name. So versatile. Guard tackle flexibility. On board yeah. with that. This is a really good transition into a topic that I do want to discuss with you guys. And I came up with a few different trade scenarios Ooh. that I'd like to take a look at. And they all are not perfect. They're all like kind of like, ah, I don't love that. Uh, Matt, I'm going to ask you to make a poll question so we get the, the chat's comments as well as I do this. The first trade option is we trade down to 12 or 13. Broncos, Raiders, whatever you want to, however you want to slice it for a third round pick. Now, obviously we want to get that second round pick. They're coming up for a quarterback. Maybe we could leverage that, but let's say it's a third round pick that the Jets get to slide down from 10. You could probably still get one of those premier players that you're, you have your eye on at number 10, but you get that extra third round pick. The second option is a trade down to about pick 17. You can call it 18, whatever you want to do. The Jaguars at 17, maybe they're coming up for a cornerback, trying to leapfrog some of the teams just behind us. But in this trade up, we get a second round pick back. But in order to do that, we have to give up our third round pick. And I'm not saying it's like overly likely, but there's that little bit of like, ah, you know what? We got the second round pick. We get the two premier guys, but we do lose that little bit of a third round pick. And that's like, you know, I don't know. We'll see where that goes. Uh, and then trade number three, we go back farther than I think any of us necessarily want to go back. We fall all the way back to 22 with the Eagles and you get their second round pick, which I believe is pick number 50. I think is that, is that right? Uh, pick number 50 would be their first second round pick. They do have pick 53 as well. So you don't lose any of your additional picks, but now you have a pick in the first, second, third, two in the fourth, and then, you know, sixth, seventh, whatever. Um, so I want to hear from you guys. I'll go to Matt first. Of these three trades, is there one that you like more in particular? Actually, let's go to Greenbean first if Matt's working on the poll. So Greenbean, what are your thoughts I'll on try these three trades? I think trade two is garbage because that's an incredible overpay from us. Giving back our third, I mean, we're overpaying by over 100 and something points on the board. Mm -hmm. So if sure. Jacksonville, well, that's what 17, I'm saying. There, there, there's a, there's a negative side to all this where it's like, you're, oh, you have like, yeah, if we want to trade wanna, back so bad, we want to get a second uh, round pick that, yeah, that I don't each one of these, there's, that there's, there's something you don't love at each one of these particular spots. Well, no, I mean, trading back to 12 and getting a third is sweet as sweet as pie. You mm -hmm. know, trading back to 22 and only getting a second. I mean, that's that that's that's value there. But I don't want to go back that far if mm -hmm. I can avoid it. 19 is kind of where I stop, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but so I would say trade one because it's simple pimple, two picks, you know, two spots. Um, you get your you get a double third and, and Denver's third is 76. So that gives us 72 and 76. Easy to package one of those with a fourth and get up into the second if you want and still keep your third. Uh, you could do that or you could just stay there. 72 and 76. That's a nice, fun third round. Um, so, yeah, I mean, trade two to me sucks the biggest of balls. Trade three is too far. Not enough for me to move back. So trade one it is for little old Green Bean. <laughs> Maybe I should have made it a fourth round pick. Green Bean, what are your th or, uh, Matt, what are your thoughts on trade one, two, and three? I, I also am going to go uh, trade one on this one just because you're not moving back crazy far. And I probably would, li I, I would like to get a second, but you might have to attach something with it to get a second if you're only moving back that much. If you're dropping a 17, and you get a second round pick, but you have to give up your third. That, that doesn't really, that doesn't move the needle as much for me. I agree with Bean. I don't want to drop all the way down to, to 22. So I'm going to reluctantly say trade one, but I'm not happy about it. Right? Yeah. yeah. I, I would probably fall the same way. There, there's too many players at 12 or 13. And I think I like Bowers a little bit more. I like fought new a little bit more in a trade down situation. Uh, so either one of those I, I'd be good with uh, making with that first trade. The trade number two with the Jaguars, it's interesting if you think you have two players you really like. That's that's what it is. I just think you're going to fall a little further than you want, and I don't know if you get Brian Thomas Jr. I don't think you get 
I mean, you might still get one of the top tackles at 17, but you might just put yourself like just out of it, and that would be a little bit of a kick in the balls if you need them. And then the third trade with the Eagles, I don't love that. That's more of the trade that's like, man, I really need a second round pick, and I like a lot of other picks, and we're not, if we're planning on drafting a potentially backup type offense, I don't want to say backup, but like, a you know, that offensive lineman that's more depth and insurance rather than taking them at 10 maybe they value taking a guyton or a graham barton or something like that at 22 and adding a second round pick you know just to get that extra value i don't know it's a it's an interesting thought experiment uh blitzker comes in says cbs watchable for me i watch cbs on youtube tv then after the play i get to see it again on the live tv broadcast every play i get is instant so i watch all my jet games on youtube tv as well it does stink that the, uh, I don't, I feel like there's a good lag on YouTube TV when it comes to yeah. the, the Jet games, but at the same time, I'm doing my every throw video, so I'm re-watching a bunch of replays regardless of whether CBS ends up showing it or not. It's just from like the visual aspect of it. Like on the broadcast, I like the, uh, the, uh, the Fox side of things or some of the other, the other channels, but not too bad. Matt, what you, how do you watch the games? I I am uh, I am an old school. I'm a cable guy. Um, I, I am one of the few millennials who haven't hasn't cut the cord. Green Bean, what about you? Well, I mean, you can do that because you're up there. You know what I mean? You're you're in that neighborhood. I haven't lived in New York, New Jersey area since when did I leave? 2006 for good. I haven't lived in up there since then. So no matter where I lived. You know, and if I want to watch a Jets game, it either has to be against a team that's local. Now I'm in uh, <coughs> commander's territory, although the Ravens push the commanders even out over here. It's crazy. Like the Ravens, you know, they they're so potent and, you know, powerful in this area. I guess they sometimes it'll they'll choose Baltimore over. But either way, it's not the Jets. So I either got to. I either got to get a service, watch them if they're playing the team that's local, or go to a bar. Uh, so it makes it difficult. Like, you got to go with a, a Sunday ticket around here. I'm, I'm with you. There's definitely a lag. I know this because every single live stream we do, at least one, usually about five or six, go, hey, you guys are behind <laughs> every single week. We make a joke about it every week. Oh, there it is. Hey, you. I, I'm not sure if you know. You guys are behind. Really? That's interesting. So I'm definitely lagging from the, you know, the TV broadcast. Um, but I wish I could, but it's just like with what Blitz Crew's talking about, having the TV on and YouTube TV so that lag gives you the instant mm -hmm. replay. Well, shit, that would make CBS real bearable, Blitz Crew. So you got yourself a plan there. I don't have that. I'm in uh, what we call East Bumblefuck. That's where I live. Dude. I mean, you got to think the signal's going all the way up to outer space and then it's coming all the way back down and then you're streaming, sending a signal all the way back up to outer space. Maybe. I don't think that's how telecom networks work. And then all the way back down and then it's going into Joe Schmo's computer uh, somewhere through his slow Wi-Fi connection. And that's why there's lag. <laughs> uh, right. JJ Hamza dropping in a coffee. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. Uh, Cuke Lake says, I would rather watch scrambled spice than cbs i don't know what oh, spice that's is. a great pull that's you're gonna great. have to you explain this one to me about? bean i have no what? idea what scrambled spice is oh that is fantastic cuca lake hey dude well done for you i love that that's good man so spice before the world is what it is we had cable and this was back in the days when i there was probably 45 channels on cable right they're like channel 40. Let, let's say if there's 45 channels, channel 46 at night, like from like 11 o'clock to like five in the morning was porn, but you had oh. to pay for it. But if you didn't pay for it, it still played, but it had the what the waves and shit. Uh -huh. So, but if Cuca, if you watched it long enough, what happened, buddy? You'd see some stuff. If you just put it on and you watched it, eh, you see some boobies. You so see boobies. I, I didn't know that. But when I was younger, you used to be able to like flip the. We we had one of the dials on on one of the TVs we had, 
And uh, I believe it was channel 80 would do that same thing. It would flicker and it would be like green and you'd see a boob here and there and you'd be like, oh, I'm pretty sure that was a girl's boob. Like, yeah, let's go. And like, you know, little 10 year old Ryan was super excited by that. Um, yeah, it's the same thing. Same, same thing. But you could mm. pay for spice like in your cable package. But who's going to do that? Because then your wife sees it, you know? That's why like, you got to join the Talking Jets OnlyFans. So that way right? all your other OnlyFans charges for all those boobies you're looking at uh, don't seem so suspicious when you have a Talking Jets OnlyFans. You could explain to your wife like, ah, see, it's just these three, you know, ridiculous talk people that talk about Jets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's fine, but you but you know, if you saw it, you know what we're talking about. Spice was just a channel. Welcome to put some spice in your life. <laughs> oh my I God. forgot all about that, dude. I haven't thought about that in decades. That's crazy. Growing up, it was always like, you know, you, you heard the term Skinamax or something like that. Where yeah, it was yeah. Like, oh, it was like a Showtime or something like that. I was going to say, uh, like, after midnight i feel like that's the most comparable that i could come up with i'm a little younger mm. but um that that's my comparable one but like i don't think kids today not knowing about like magazines being a thing like that's yeah. kind of that's kind of wild right dude, at, dude when i when i start seeing like video game stuff and it's like oh i'm this old like showing whatever video game system that you was your first video game system it's like you used to have to go to channel three <laughs> and you'd have a yeah. coaxial like jacked in like You'd be plugged into your like cable line, so it would be like a pass through, and uh, yeah. that's how you would get your. That's how you would play your game. There was no HDMI. There was no, you know. I guess at a later point, it was you know turned the AV, you know the red, white, yellow uh, component cables or whatever those are called. But yeah, yeah. Uh, like well, now it's so red. Everything's so readily available for this generation. You guys have no. We had to be creative. So. Like in a pinch, the scrambled spice. You're like, ah, you know, you know. but it's like we had to like we we had nudie mags in the woods, like all the local yeah. kids in town. Like if, if you stole a Playboy or a penthouse or whatever it was, a hustler from your dad or whatever it might be, you dropped it off at the fire pit in the woods where everybody would drink or whatever. But I've been dude. That's where I saw all my first shit were from rained on magazines that were folded in. You know what I mean? Just like rain crusted and just, I would, that's it wasn't I the rain everything. that made those crusty. Dude, I was literally riding a big <laughs> wheel. I shit you not. I was riding a big wheel. The first time I found my first porn pile stash. In the fucking wood. I shit you not. I was collecting tadpoles. <laughs> I just wanted to collect some tadpoles. I learned. Oh, I learned these little white it. swimmy tadpoles are, are something yeah. totally different. <laughs> oh my God. That's, That's incredible. Great. Yeah. My first but experience, I found my dad's porn magazines under the bed. It was Penthouse. Definitely. Yeah, uh, Penthouse. Penthouse was good. Play. It was like Playboy, but it stepped up a notch. That was pre like internet. And then I remember even like getting yeah. the internet and being like, ooh, pictures. <laughs> and yeah. Like that was the thing. Like but the first time my buddy showed me like, a video i was like what you can do this and then yeah. i got a psp in middle school and ryan didn't leave the bathroom. over <laughs> yeah you hung out in there a little while oh geez uh garrett comes in says goobalini bean yeah, yeah goobalini. the goobalini right oh, goobalini like that. bean is that how that hat is called it's the goobalini yeah yeah i mean you guys call it a beanie right mm -hmm. or some people would call it a a hat you know what I mean? Like the winter hat. But in the Italian, nor at least in North Jersey Italian, that's what it's called. <laughs> Gubellini. I, 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 I didn't know. I just thought these were Gubellinis. That's what I thought mm. everything. It's like I thought Harper was Ajita. I don't know. That's just what Peter it, S. What comes we in. Says sweeten the pot with trade number one and include Zach Wilson. So, Peter, we were actually, uh, Greenbean and I did our mock draft on his channel last night on the 10 o'clock mock. And that was actually the trade that we did. Only it wasn't a third round pick. It was 12, I believe it was a fourth round pick and Cortland Sutton. Is that what it was, Green Bean? Yeah, it was. Yeah, so they're, they're third. So we got 1276 Cortland Sutton for 10, 111, and Zach Wilson. That's mm. what the trade was last night. That would certainly Not sweeten bad. the deal. Steven comes yeah. in with Super Chat, says, what if we traded with the Packers? Number 10 for 25, 41, and 88. It aligns well with the trade value chart. Take a look, Green Bean. 
10 equals 1,300 points. 25 equals 720 points. 41 is 490. 88 is 160 uh, for 1,370 points. So that would be a really nice, pretty equal fallback. I feel like the team that is falling back, which would be us, you should want to get like a little bit more value than what the value chart is, I feel like, for going that far back. So that would be, uh, I would I would like that. I think that's an interesting uh, interesting option if we didn't have any other oh, trade yeah. partners available to us. It's still really far back. Um, and I do kind of want a blue chipper. So I, I might give myself yeah. a little pause, but I would probably ultimately take that. What are your thoughts, Green Bean? You're definitely getting out of that range for sure. But mm -hmm. if we're not looking for the tackle to start right away, so that's like the problem with like the Bowers boys or the wide receiver mm -hmm. people with taking a tackle, the problem they have with the tackles, you're not going to start right away. Well, then trade back, get 41, 88, mm -hmm. and uh, 25. You try by 25, get a second and a third uh, on top of your third. Now taking a tackle, that's not going to start, makes a bunch of sense. But who are you going to get mm -hmm. there? You got like Patrick Paul. Um, you probably Guyton, Guyton Amarius Mims. Man, I, either yeah, one of those guys man, in a trade down that far, I like. I don't I don't yeah. mind that. When you're going that's, that that's far right. back to get like the depth tackle or whatever, I'm I'm okay with that. Because then at 41, you're gonna get your Leggett, mm -hmm. Roman Wilson, uh Ricky Pearsall. You're gonna be able to get whatever wide receiver you're like, no problem. And then you got 72 and 88 to stock up on the interior or safety, defensive tackle. I feel like the Jets are probably going to find a way to draft a cornerback, but running backs mm -hmm. at play, you know, in play uh, in the third, fourth round range, especially with our two fourths. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would do that trade. Honestly, man. Unless I really loved the guy at mm -hmm. 10. You know what I mean? Make him pay a little Matt, more. What would you think about this particular trade? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I was trying to Google when Green Bean said big wheel. I was thinking of this thing that I had as a kid. It had like you sat the in big it, blue the wheel. wheel. They had like the two wheels on the side and you'd roll it around like that. But I don't know what it was called. And I was trying to figure out what the hell the thing was called. Oh, I don't know what that is. I'm thinking big wheel. Like I think it was a red bike with a big blue wheel and massive like handlebars. No. And you got the tiny wheels behind you and you could power slide. Let me show you. All right. That's what I was looking uh, at. I know, I know uh, what a big I'll, wheel is, but that sparked what, like, I, I don't know what the thing that I had is called. And it's been really bothering me the last five minutes. And I'm going to, I feel bad to Steven because it's a very good question, but I was preoccupied with trying to figure out what the hell that was called. So two big wheels on either side. Are you talking about like, like one of those hover chat? Crazy car. Crazy think, car? I'm like a, yeah, throw it in there. It I'm is crazy car. Chat. Let's Thank see if you. I can figure out how to do this. Let me see. Now Hold I want to see what it's it's called a crazy car. Yeah, a crazy car with a K. I'm literally I'm looking at it. I don't see anything that you're oh wait, it looks like a shoe. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you Google sit imaging in it, this. Two wheels on the side with handles on it, you spin it, and that's how you move. Is there another way to look this up? Because Google's not giving me that with crazy cars. It's giving me a bunch of cars that are crazy looking. No, K, like type in crazy with a K. K R A Y car. That would do it. Interesting. <laughs> you you look like Axel from uh, from Twisted Metal. Show me. Can can you show us? It's yeah. yeah I got you right here. Watch this. This is what it is. Oh, that just made me so happy that I found out what that was. <laughs> I couldn't think. Of. Yeah, that's what you were thinking. Dude, yeah. it looks like Captain America shields, but then like, had you guys ever played Twisted Metal as a kid? Axel is the guy that's tied between the two wheels riding around. That's what this reminds me of. Oh, uh, that was the best. Mine was black and it had like purple wheels, if I remember correctly. All right, Brian, I just dropped the link in the chat to the site with the big wheel. All right, let's see. So this is what I was riding around when I when I stumbled on my first porn pile in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> with my friend wait do you see this thing you want to talk about it? you're gonna be like oh my god what were you oh this for? is exactly what i was talking about yeah yeah. this is exactly this is what i was talking big about wheel. the big wheel yeah that's it. the big <laughs> the wheel. power slide baby that's what that e-brakes for that's right that's the power slide dude let me tell you something i rode that thing on what now would be called mountain biking trails i shit you not dude like just down mountains and i was, I was like i went everywhere with that thing. I used to run a downhill mountain biking uh, facility. That would be nuts. Absolutely crazy. Dude. 
So think about that kid, right? Whoever the kid is riding that, you think he's supposed to stumble on 32 swank cherry hustler penthouse mags in the woods. Greenbean was only 15 riding this too. That's what's That's crazy. Right. About this I was young. 15. <laughs> oh, this um, is amazing. So fantastic. I'm sorry to just completely throw that off the, no, off that, the was that was good. That was good. Matt, great. you want to, do you want to answer the question of like the trade down with the Packers? Yeah. I, I don't want to go all the way down to 25. Um, I, I know that, that you're getting a lot for it, right? You get 25, 41 and 88 aligns of the trade value chart. Eh, no, I, cause I don't think you're going to get someone as good in that range as what you could possibly get if you drop back like only five spots. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to respectfully pass on that. Charles says, I don't mind CBS. However, I like Fox, NBC, ESPN, and Amazon Prime more. Charles, you're, you're, you're preaching to the choir here. I don't think, is there another TV service outside of these? I guess Peacock had the one play, uh, the one playoff game. They can mm -hmm. pound rocks, take a long walk off a short pier. All our goddamn playoff games are going to end up being on streaming services that we're going to have to buy for one month at a time just to see the damn game. That's what it's ultimately going to be. That's where this all comes down to. Mm-hmm. I like it, Charles. Uh, Cuke Lake says, Swank Magazine made you grow up fast. That's right. That was, a head, that was a, you know, you look at Playboys, you look at Penthouse, it's all okay, it's very good. You get to Swank and you're learning things. You're learning like things that you're probably not Discount Magazine or kinky kind of like, you know, different it's kinky. stuff. Yeah, kinky. Mm. It's like, it even, it's more than Hustler. Mm. And Hustler got in trouble for breaking new ground as well <laughs> oh you ever see the people says, versus larry flint no <laughs> i'm not aware movie. of that you should, it. you should see it. it's great let's actually my favorite one of my favorite like on that sort of realm uh is uh have you ever seen zach and miri make a porno yeah it's with great. seth oh, rogan good movie. oh it's so funny it's so good the coffee shop star wars based yeah. porn Amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. Fun. That was a fun movie. A little it's long. A it, it's a little long. It's goofy, but it's fun. Um, Blitz Crew comes in and says, the first porn found from behind mags at a construction site. I had a Knight Rider big wheel as a kid. That's sick. I love it. I love it. Joey comes in and says, what's your early prediction for who we play week one? I'm picking the Titans. Um, so that would be in Nashville then. So that wouldn't be the Jets home opener. Uh, week one. I feel like it's got to be a division rival. It might be like a, maybe it's, Dolph. I don't know if we never play the Dolphins that early up here. I feel like it, that's a Bills game usually. Yep. I say Bills. I, I was going to say every Bills. year. What are your thoughts, Matt? You think Bills too? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say Bills as well. I think we got a rematch there. Uh, Deion Dawkins has been doing his uh, shit talking. I think that's that's the one. Yeah. Greenbee, what oh, do you think we won? I would love it. Uh, I would. I could also go for a change up though. Mm -hmm. Let us play the Patriots Week One and beat the living shit mm -hmm. out of them. Let's that do would that. Be a hell of a way to start the season. You know what I mean? Let's go in there and beat the living snot out of the young, uh, new branded Patriots, the Gerard Mayo Patriots. Go in there and smack them silly. That's what I'd like to do. Set the tone uh, early in their regime. Yep. This is what uh, it's going to be like. Welcome. Ten sack, three interception performance from Drake May. You know, yeah. yeah. Really ruin his confidence right away exactly. like they pull him in the third quarter the quarter jacoby Brissett comes in uh -huh. leads him to a game tying touchdown and then we need no, zero line to that's kick not the, gonna happen. He's the not end gonna of go the game field goal from 50 yards he's just gonna lose his confidence like matt said like so many yeah. zach wilson's before him you know uh, what I mean? be absolutely magical reddick will Charles? get a strip sack pull on his arm like a slot machine like they did to chad pennington 150 times early in his that's career. right mm -hmm. yeah I Charles like comes in, drops a gifted talking Jets membership member to the OnlyFans. Charles, thank nice. you so much for gifting that. Someone's getting an OnlyFans subscription. Uh, courtesy of Mr. Charles. Uh, DLB yeah, one right. arm. What up, buddy? 
Excited to talk to you again. He drops a 20 spot. Matt, can you put a poll question in the live oh, chat for oh. which one you want to freeze? We'll let the chat decide. $20 super chat means you get to freeze one of those. Uh, People vs. Larry Fint is a must watch. Green Bean, yeah. could you kind of explain a little bit of what that movie is? I do not, uh, I don't know it at all. It, is that Woody Harrelson that did it? I believe I'm it's a big Woody, Woody Har- guy too. Larry Flint, he owned Hustler. So what 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 he did was he took he took the Naked Magazine thing to a whole new level, and he was really attacked for it, right? So he, and 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 he fought against like you know the like religious people, government, mm. like they tried to shut him down because of um, you know what's the word uh you know being like lewd you know uh, Mm. whatever so um but he ended up winning the court case on you know freedom of press and all that kind of shit but then somebody got mad and shot him and he and he was paralyzed from the waist down because of that and then he you know so like it's the whole process there who is his wife uh courtney love is mm-hmm. like she's one of the girls that ends up being there's lots of drugs it's just it's a really great movie about like um in that world mm-hmm. a guy who fought against like the system wanting to shut him down for being inappropriate it's kind of like what we see now like if you disagree with something they call you know they say you're mm-hmm. inciting Cancel. violence and they want to censor you it was that he fought censorship and mm-hmm. uh and he won and so it's really it's a it's a great movie but it's like uh it's really something else to see like what he was doing and you know i just so you guys know fun fact um the porno movie that i made mm-hmm. was for yeah. hustler films that's who that's who paid oh. me yeah yankee doodle yankee okay. doodle that's right <laughs> yankee, yankee doodle. noodles noodle that's right hustler films uh, everybody i love it i love it I, another speaking on the same type of uh movie genre have you guys ever seen Middlemen at all? Really good movie. Came out no. probably 2008, 2009, somewhere in that ballpark. It's about the uh, creation of like, I don't know if it's technically PayPal, but it's like the online transaction. And guys decided, it's got, uh, I think it's the guy from Suits, Harry or Harvey. And um, oh, who's the other guy? There's two dudes in it. You'd recognize them both. And uh, they develop a way to take credit card payments online. They start putting naked pictures up online of like strippers. They go to their local strip club and like they they set up uh, a, an alarm for different types of genres that people are clicking on. So like big boobies or like, you know, whatever genre you want. And so they're in their apartment and you hear ding, ding, 20 bucks, ding, 20 bucks. Wah, 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 wah. And it's like all this stuff like starting to go crazy. And it, it gets into like the drugs, the mafia side of it. It is such a good movie. If you have an opportunity to watch Middlemen, really fun movie to watch. No, wait a minute. Paris, Paris says he owns my porn. Is that real? That's amazing. If you do. <laughs> it's called reality sucks. If anybody wants to see it. Um, I'm not naked in there or anything. I could have been, right? I'm in it. No, I'm in it numerous times, but I okay. play a character. Yeah. So I'm, I play, I play uh bachelor number three in the mating game. I didn't get chosen obviously. Um, and then I was Yankee doodle and I was uh, pitching a different, I wanted to make my pitch uh, was I wanted to make a porno with utensils or something like that. <laughs> stupid shit whipped cream and, and utensils but then like so for every scene yankee doodle i was drafting dressed in an american sam fucking costume with a <laughs> feather and then uh and i would we would carry the bed in for every scene like so the whole scene with there was all these scenes and then so but right as the sex scene was about to happen we would walk in with the bed and i was one of the guys who would carry the bed with my costume <laughs> <laughs> but uh oh. yeah that's all you have lived a hell of a life, Green Bean. That yeah, is. I know. That's why I think I'm going to die soon. I lived. I've done too many things. Oh, I hope stop. not. That, I don't do that. Me too. Don't I don't, you know, I'm not rooting for it. But you know. no, you got plenty of years left. Oh Thank man, you. that is amazing. I'm um, the runaway way, so you might. Yeah, as well I was going to say this looks like a a pretty much dead on thing. Hey, Matt, any last words? Well, I think don't care. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brian Hennessy. Comes in, says, early stat prediction for Rodgers. I say 30 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. I think we're going to get single-digit interceptions. So, sub-10. And I think 
I think he breaks the touchdown record. I'm going to say like 35. Our record, I think, is 31, maybe? 30 or 30. I know, I think we got 30 before, but I'll say 35. Greenbean, what's your way too early stat prediction for Rodgers? Um, 30 touchdowns. You know, it's so crazy with this shit because it just never happens for us. Uh, but I'm going to, here's what I honestly believe. If Aaron Rodgers plays 17 games this year in the regular season, I believe that he is going to be a man possessed, wanting to make every doubter out there pay for the bullshit that they gave him and the Jets this year. So I see a 40 touchdown kind of a thing. I see 4,500 plus yards, and I see probably 10, right, 10, 9, 10 interceptions kind of a thing. Um, And I am here for it, Ryan. Matt, what about you? What do you think the way too early stat prediction for Rodgers is going to be? Way too early subject to change in August when we actually get somebody close is uh, I'll say 4,200 yards, 32 touchdowns, 10 picks, something like that. All right, all right. Cuca Lake coming in says, best talking Jets in so long. That's hurtful, Cuca Lake. I feel like every week is really good. This one's gone off the rails a little bit, though. This one's been fun. Just wait till day three. We're, we're coming up rapidly approaching day three of the NFL draft. You get about seven hours of this. Day three of the NFL draft is so absurd on this damn channel with the three of us in the whole chat. It gets ridiculous. It's, it's honestly my favorite part of the draft because we get some cool guests on as well. And like just some of the names that pop up, it like it becomes a little less about the draft, <laughs> a little more about the hangout. Uh, but you know what, though, in mm-hmm. fairness, like you look at 2022, we didn't have a pick past the fourth round. So we had mm-hmm. five, six, seven to endure. We got a whole bunch of fodder this year. It's this true. is a little different. Joe Douglas doesn't traditionally have a lot of sevens. And when he has six, he likes to use them to trade up. And maybe he will mm-hmm. again this year. But currently, we have a lot more picks on day three than we're used to. So maybe mm-hmm. just maybe we'll talk less about fries at McDonald's versus fries at Wendy's. And we can talk football. Wouldn't that be something? Talking, baby. It would feel so weird to do that. Chauncey comes in, says, Green Bean, Ryan, and Matt, you guys do a great job. I have a Jet fan home. This makes me feel good. I love hearing this sort of stuff. Just the, the fact that you guys come out and hang out with us in the chat for like every week on Tuesday nights for two hours, it means the absolute world to us. It really does. It's so cool. Um, so thank you. This is this is quite the compliment, Chauncey. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And look, you know, we want you. We want you to feel like this is your home. That's the whole thing, dude. You know, that's what we're doing. Joey here. Jets coming in says first stream I got to watch start to finish in a long time. Great time, boys. <laughs> uh, we start hit, my we, we start hitting our stride right around draft time. I, I'd like to hit our stride in the middle of football season with some good wins. That would be really nice. Yeah. That would be something. Um, Wimmy says, poll to watch reality sucks online. Uh, maybe we do this in the Discord. <laughs> find, yeah. find out when Green you know Bean what? appears. <laughs> we could do that. You know what? Listen to this. We so could. we did a, um, we did like a bonus. So there's like director's bonus stuff on the DVD. Not that we have a DVD player anymore. I was going to say, please tell me you have a DVD of this. Oh, I have them. I have them in. I have, I have them the multiples. Mag- yeah, like I more- have multiples. I have that's one so that's cool. unopened because one is just, I played it for everybody back. It's just, you know, the box is broken and shit. But I have one that's unopened um, wow. where my kids can't find it. So, yeah, it's important. but uh, <laughs> we did like, we did extras, right? So there's a director's thing where we watched the whole movie. But you remember Mystery Science Theater 3000? Oh, I love that. Remember show. that show? So yeah. we all had like those costumes. So you could see our. There were three of us, so like my Yankee Doodle hat and the other guys. You can see all of our costumed hats like in front of the screen, and we tell you like what's happening behind the scenes during that scene. It's mm-hmm. one of the funniest things I've ever done. Like it's truly, uh, it's really good. It real, it's it's. I'm very I'm not to say proud of it, but it's like one of those things that we, it was like a weird idea that we threw together that really worked. So if we did it. Maybe we watch that. So you see the whole movie, but you also get the commentary and the, and the comedy. 
we part. should almost do that for like the Jets highlights. Get like a green screen or something and put it like our silhouettes and we're sitting in like an audience <laughs> and we're just heckling yeah. like the highlights or something like that. I, I used to love Mystery Science Theater. Let's do that. Let's work on that. That would be fun. We could figure something out. I mean, I guess yeah. you could probably just put like, I mean, it would be fun if it was silhouettes because then you could actually see us like flailing around as opposed to just like stationary yeah. images. <laughs> but Yeah, yeah. That'd be kind well, of we talk. We just yeah. talk freely about what's going on. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I love it. Charles comes in. Charles says, my prediction is like 40 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, plus 4,000 yards. Charles, we're going to break it. every damn quarterback single season record. 100%. Yeah. I honestly believe, like, again, if he plays every, like, let's just say that Aaron Rodgers comes back and he's healthy, right? I mm -hmm. think he's going to be on fire driven and we already know we have examples of his response to feeling burned feeling scorned right we mm -hmm. saw the most recent is when the when the packers kind of uh said all right well we're going to start the moving on from aaron Rodgers process and draft a first round quarterback instead of getting him something to use what did he do he responded the next two years with back-to-back -back mvps mm -hmm. so that's the kind of guy that we have he's he's he might be spiritual he might be all those things, but he's a little bit petty, and I, you know, I like it, and and exactly the right reasons, you know, for what we want. So I think he's going to be a man possessed this year. I really do. It's nice. We don't even have to spend our first round pick on a quarterback for him to be pissed off. He's so mad at what went down last year that he's just going to go off. It's going to be a wild year. Matt, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I ca I cannot wait for the Jets propaganda that is one Jets drive to have like the voiceover of Aaron Rodgers talking like him walking back out to for the first practice at training camp and he's like just watch that like or like one of those lines where he's like you think I you know I got hurt I'm done I'm 40 this that. just watch me oh my god that's gonna hit like nothing's ever hit before oh my god Paul Flans hops in says Tuesday night on talking Jets is better than finding a pile of porn this is true. You got the internet too. It would be very true. If I found a pile of porn somewhere, that means someone was probably like using it and I don't really want to like go through it. Wow. Internet's a beautiful thing. I don't know. There's a charm to finding the magazines in the woods. <laughs> yeah. When you're on a big wheel. Sure. <laughs> Before the you internet. Know? Yeah, absolutely. Look, let, well, let me ask you this. If you're walking in the woods, you're on a hike and you look over to the right and there's 15 nudie mags. You're not going to look and see what's going on over there. I, I giggle like all hell. I think it would be hysterical. I don't think I'm opening the pages. I don't need to have pages stuck together of some random ah, hand sanitizer. What are you going to do? Whatever <laughs> it's been, it's been there. It's been there a long time. Whatever's on there is dead. I don't I mean, mean it to be dead. I just, I don't want get, it like on me. You get, you have a worse scene in fucking Wawa bathroom, dude. You know what I mean? Mm. You ain't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, you know what? Let's stop and take a break. My might as well do it right here. We can take a little break, have some water, right? Everybody's tired. <laughs> Mike. Elevate the heart rate a little bit. Why not? Yeah. Aaron Daniels yeah, yeah. comes in, says, can we add the DVDs to the prize wheel? Get a little sliver. Ooh. of. So I have, what, let me see. If I, I don't I know if I still one. have it, Green Bean, but I have a DVD duplicator. So like, we could make that happen. That's really funny. You do? Okay. I can... Um, I got to find it. I haven't used it since I was in my old apartment. So I'm talking like two apartments ago. So I don't know if I even still have the thing, but it was is. a one-to-one uh, -one DVD duplicator that was like very handy. Those used to be... Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you guys have done this, but there's nothing quite like... Uh, burning CDs used to mm. be my... I used to... And dude, my first car, I had a 2000 Ford Explorer. So no aux or anything like that. So mm -hmm. I would make even like when I was older in high school, I'd be like, I'd go back to my early 2000s days and be like, I'm making CD mixtapes and I have mm -hmm. my book. And I'm just going to pick one out and pop it in and we're going to go. And that's how we're going to listen to music because I don't have an aux cord. So the nice thing about having a 95 Ford Taurus is it had the cassette player. So you could do the cassette to aux, which was really nice. That was super clear. I hated using yeah. like the radio ones. The radio ones were always like dog shit. Radio ones were bad. My, I broke my, I had one of those, but I broke it. My tape, it like got stuck in there. It wouldn't come out. So then that's when we made the switch. Murph says, I subscribed because I saw Matt on the show. Talking about talking jets. Nice. Oh, Bye. thank you so much, Murph. You're, you're a real one, buddy. 
Uh, Jimmy Jet says, since Ryan had a hairline. I guess I, wow, geez. That's that funny. That is brutal. <laughs> Holy, Ryan has <laughs> Have I really lost? I, someone sent me a picture of like me in one of my earlier videos. I'm like, oh, I'm cringy now, but I was really cringy then. Yeah, no one likes watching back their early stuff. No, but I, super you look, I, you look good, Ryan. I, I would say you're you're very handsome. Thank you. I think yeah, you yeah, both upper, are very handsome as well. Upper tier. You guys yeah, are you got. Tier. I'm a solid like North Jersey seven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally. No, like seven, in the no woods one. in Bumble, Bumblefuck. We're not winning beauty pageants here, but we can get the job done here at, at Talking Jets. We're we're fine. We're doing okay. Right, we're doing all right. I'm happy with my situation. I did okay. I'm done. I don't yeah, even know. Dude, any... I can't imagine dating right now. Like, it's There's gotta no be miserable. I would not want to do the online dating thing. Getting ghosted too many times. I don't I don't photograph well. I'm more of a personality guy. <laughs> I am a, a looker. <laughs> yeah. I wanna make you laugh. You know, girls, I'm looking for somebody to make me laugh. I'm like, oh mm. like, no, not you. The right place, yeah. I'm not the, like the, the first guy, like you see him in the bar. I'm not very tall. I'm not, I'm not going to be that six foot guy that can win you with the, the devilish good looks and the height. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Not my game. Uh, Sean comes in and says, the Sears catalog. What are we in? Uh, Step Brothers? <laughs> good housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite non-pornographic magazine. The Yankee. No, if, if you're going in that realm, it was all National Geographic, dude. That was the oh, trip. you see some, see some, see some boobies in there. Oh, <laughs> Real God. boobs, dude. And in this, the library, the, you know, that you know, they mm -hmm. give you library hour or whatever in elementary school, and they're like, and don't go by. We know why you want to see the <laughs> National Geographic. And like, well, I want to learn about fucking. Uh, I want to learn about cheetahs China. and lions. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, yeah, okay. Sure All the boys. <laughs> Greg says, "Yank my doodle, it's dandy." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's so good. It's so good. It's did you so good. see Blitz Cruz uh, Super Chat down here? Did I not click on it? Let's see. Hold on. No, I definitely Justin did not. Hardy okay. One? He says, uh, did you give a salute to Justin Hardy? I did not. Oh, sure. um, really liked Justin Hardy. I would have liked to have had him back. I felt like once we signed, um, I'm blanking on the first name, but Oliver from uh, the 49ers. Yeah, Gunner plus uh, a nickel corner or a slot corner or whatever. Um, I felt like Hardy's days were numbered. I think it was just a numbers game at that point. Um, really liked him. Wish we could have kept him. Sad we didn't. Matt, your thoughts? Kind of the same thing. Uh, I do think it's a sneaky big loss. Like, yes, they, mm -hmm. they brought in Isaiah Oliver and Irv Charles had some nice flashes. But, I mean, we saw it firsthand in one of the games that Hardy didn't play. They let up a kick return for a touchdown. If you look at the the numbers of their punt coverage with and without Hardy, there was a big difference. So Isaiah Oliver has big shoes to fill. I'm not saying that he can't do it, but it is it is a pretty you know it's it's a big loss. It's your special teams captain, a leader on this team. It's going to hurt. Greenby, what are your thoughts about losing Hardy to the Browns? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, it sucks losing a guy like him. Now there is a there are downsides to him. He was a little bit penalty oriented, right? So there's that. You know that wasn't great, but I think his play was exceptional. I mean, he was uh, one of the top special teams players in the league, and the best we've had in a long time. Like Matt mentioned, Irv Charles is is solid as well, but you saw the difference. You know, um, but the good news is it's another guy comp pick formula man you know what i mean we're even so, now uh actually i think we're one up are we i think i what think are, so because we've got hardy we've well, got isaiah uh, oliver Whitehead. was cut isaiah oliver was a release mike williams was a release reddick is a trade morgan moses is a trade right so yeah so we're talking count. leaky photo or whatever okay ken law you've got tyron smith You've got right. Kim Tyrod Law Taylor. and Tyrod Taylor. That's four. And we and Jonathan Simpson. Jonathan Simpson. So we're at five. So then we lost Whitehead, Hardy, Huff, um, Huff, Hall, Hall. We still Rippin. have McGovern and Becton both sitting out there. Rippin's got Rippin got signed. He was on our roster. It's true. Mm, that would count. 
Uh, there's there's another one. Hold hold on. Maybe maybe that maybe we are even. I thought we were one up, but um, let me see. Yeah, last I looked, I thought we were down one. Did you say Quentin Jefferson? Uh, I didn't. Nope. That's a good there one. There he is. That's the one. That's the other one I was thinking. So that puts us one up, which it would, if it's like that, it would, I believe it defaults to, if you have one, it mm -hmm. defaults to your highest. So that would be Huff right for a fourth. Time. Yeah. That would be nice. I'd love yeah. to get a comp pick back for Huff. Yeah. I'm still pessimistic that it's going to happen. Or did we reach the, when does that change? Is that the end of April? I think yeah. It's the end of April. Wait, no, it's before the 28th. I think it's April 28th. I think it's the last day of the draft. I was going to say that stands out for some reason. I don't know why, but that date stands out to me too. April 28th. Seven. So it'd be the Sunday after the draft would be the 28th. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. That, cause that's when fifth year options I think are due as well. April I believe that's 26th. when that decision has oh, to be made. Maybe it's the 28th, right? Um, yeah, I can't. I don't know. I'd have to dig a little bit. I think it's right. It's right in that area. So, And that's why you see around now it settles down. There's a lot mm -hmm. less that – because teams, are they're really weighing it out. Like, we're tight. We could get a comp. Is this guy – worth losing a comp pick do we think he's gonna be there it, it's been a couple of weeks nobody signed him we could tell him hey we're really interested uh mm -hmm. here's what we'll give you they could have agreements and sign right after the window closes you see a bunch of signings after the window every year mm -hmm. for that reason i see ny uh super fan says the comp pick formula is based on salary signed by the player that is the second condition so first off you have to see the like the amount in versus the amount lost and mm -hmm. right now, did we say we were even or, or up one now? We're up, up one. We're up one. one. So, right, the, the, the first wave is just in and out. That's the first indicator, right? Um, does Rippin and, does count for that, though? Yes. Like, if he wasn't... Okay, I wasn't sure if practice squad mattered. Or I guess he was on active roster probably at the end of the year, I would think, right? Was. He was active. So, yeah. Um, he was, yeah, he was active at the end of the year behind... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Trevor Simeon. Simeon. Holy shit. Uh, what a year. So, um, yeah. So he counts. I see Harlan saying, uh, Hardy committed a lot of penalties. Others could do the job. Uh, he did, but he had so many early tackles that yeah. I thought displaced. I think he had 75 yards of dead ball penalties. If I'm not mistaken, over the two years he was here, yeah. this is, a, is lot. a lot. It is. It a lot. It is. But we and also a lot of them had unnecessary too. Like he would like it was quite yeah. a few. It was like, dude, what are you doing? But dude, mm -hmm. his his play way overvalued that. Like it it I definitely agree. trumps the penalty. It's it's a it's a negative, and then you add the potential comp pick point. So you can make a little stew mm -hmm. that helps you helps it go down. But losing mm -hmm. Hardy's a hit, dude. Now Isaiah yeah. Oliver is pretty good special teamer. Or, or Charles pretty good special teamer. Um, and look. Uh, um, our special teams coach is pretty good. The special teams thing is changing this year. Like, you know, the kickoffs and all that. So there's a lot of change. So we don't know. We don't know what it looks like. He may be it's less valuable because of that. Like that. Do, we, do we know what his contract was? I didn't see it. Didn't I see didn't it. either. I heard he got a few years is what I was, what I, I saw someone made a comment about that, but I don't know if that's actually true. Yeah, they got um, a baller, dude. The changing of the kickoff makes all the depth players that we were are going to get with our two fourths, our sixth, our two sevenths that much more important. Um, I mean, it's you're talking about star-studded potential kickoff returns. Like I could see the 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 Dolphins using Tyree Kill or Waddle back there, Mostert in a in a kick return situation that they need. It's going to be really tough to get some of these running backs down. Uh, or, or kick returners back. I mean, you saw Cordero Patterson get signed immediately after uh, that rule change came into effect. I'm excited for it. I think it's going to bring the excitement back to special teams. Another positive is that, you know, he was technically a cornerback, yeah. right? So, you know, like, er, like th there's a question in here. Who just said it? Um, well, Isaiah Oliver, what's good about him is he kind of hits two birds with one stone. So yeah. if you want to carry that extra offensive lineman, without yeah. needing to like, you know, have only two quarterbacks or something like that. That that sort of gives yeah. you that flexibility. 
Correct. And I, he's not Hardy by any means. No, but yeah. again, Hardy, you know, the way that the kickoff, you know, Hardy was good on punts. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. He was really something else on punt coverage. Um, so that we're going to miss that. Uh, no doubt. You know, look, Sherwood's good on specials. Yaboa's good on specials. Irv Charles is good on specials. Isaiah, they're good. We're, we, it's not like we have a, uh, you know, this vacuum, but none of them are what we lost, you know, mm-hmm. but the, the, but again, there's, you know, he couldn't play any cornerback. dude. He was completely mm-hmm. useless. Like somebody just, uh, Steve Larson asked, can Irv Charles play any wide receiver? Irv Charles can play more wide receiver than Hardy could play cornerback. That's without yeah. question. So there's that. You know what I mean? So now you get a guy who maybe, maybe he's not as good as a gunner, but he can fill that role and adequately, and he could go in in a pinch and actually give you some real play. For whatever reason, he 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 played in two that in the first year, um, a little bit of corner. corner. He was fucking garbage, dude. Oh, Hardy. Like, okay, he, my, I don't yeah, even yeah, remember playing corner. So that would have been a little bit. That would have been Priest, or was that the same year we got Sauce? He's, was he was here that, for two years, or was it three years? I think it was three. Hardy was wasn't three. It? Yeah, it was I'm three. So 2021, he got on. He got on the field as a cornerback. Let me let me make okay. sure that makes sense because that was pre Reed and that was pre uh, Sauce. That would have been Hall Eccles. Um, I don't even think we had Michael Carter at that point, right? Nope. Oh, 21 was the the, the 21 was draft. Yeah, that was when we drafted him, I guess. Right. What the hell's his name again? Justin Hardy. Hardy. <laughs> I thought yeah, we had him for two years. For some reason. All right, there it is. <laughs> okay, hold on. Whew, I spelt it wrong. That's what it was. All right. Mm. You can go to that. I'm just I'll look this up. J Boy says, just be happy. We got Hall. He can wreck teams with the kickoff change. I really want to see Brees Hall return a kick. Not all the time. And I would probably use a little bit of caution initially until we know there's not as many injuries, but I really like the idea of using Hall in those sort of situations or having another running back that you feel more comfortable with. You know, if you if you have a touchdown that you need to get, like a playoff situation or a late division game or something like that, that's when I kind of want to see him. I don't want to see him back there all the time. That would give me, you know, a little bit of the, the nervousness, but maybe that's how you justify paying running backs or something like that more. Maybe they've made themselves so valuable in that aspect that they get the ball in their hands more frequently and you're more willing to pay a little bit more. Maybe that's where you could see a, a little bit of a shift. I don't know. Matt, what do you think about Brees returning kicks? Um, In special situations, like you said, in a playoff game, a la uh, Antonio Camardi against the Colts in 2010, mm-hmm. something like that. Big moment, big spot, sure. Uh, as your every down, not every down, but as your every return kind of guy, I don't think that's the right move. Green Bean, what do you think about Brees returning kicks? I wouldn't do it. Mm. I don't give a shit what he can do on there. I wouldn't do it. It's overtime it. game. Overtime game to get to the Super Bowl. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Got it. Let me listen. Let me just say, I've been a Jets fan for 41 years. That hasn't presented itself just yet, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> it, it is. Does. We we are an hour and 52 minutes and 50 seconds into the stream. If we go into an overtime game in the AFC Championship game, and Brees Hall returns a kick for a Super Bowl, I'm putting yeah. all my inheritance. I'm putting all my money on black and going to the casino. That's <laughs> right. Here's what's happening, baby. Let's let it ride. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, take all your money. Don't go 50-50, just black. Put it on oh. 35 black. Oh, that's that what would you do. Dude, what I used Super Bowl to... are we on? 50 some odd? 54? Yeah. 5? 7? 12? Like 7? Somewhere. Fuck, I don't know. I oh, my paying. God, guys. Can I you imagine attention. Reeves Hall returning a frigging kick and he gets hurt? I don't want if, it. If he... <sighs> it's not worth it, man. That's where you put little dudes that, you know, you put people there to die. You know what I mean? Like, that's... But it might be different. Like, it, it might not be any different than him just running the ball behind our line of scrimmage. You Only know, it's going to be more, cool. it's, it's probably you know less fatties, I guess. You know what's really cool about this, though? You really only got to make it through one line. Unless oh, they're yeah. going to back people up and do this whole like thing. You're, you're, I don't know you're not talking D-line, linebackers, safeties. You're talking like 
a row of linebackers is is kind of what you're looking at with some corners kind of thrown in there. It's exciting. Dude, I, I didn't jinx shit, you bunch of crazies. I'm saying not to do it. <laughs> Brian's fucking jinxing it, if anything. It's going to happen. We're going to see him return a kick. You guys are nuts. How did I jinx anything? I'm saying don't tempt fate. Oh, you're talking about 35 Black? 35 Black comes. First thing you do at a casino, if you're going to walk into a casino, I don't gamble. It's been a long time. Uh, but when I walk in, first thing I do is 35 Black. I won on that. No exaggeration. I would say at least a third of the time. 35 Black, first thing I do at a casino. I put $100 on 35 Black, 35 to 1, 3,500. No shit. Do you pick 35 Black because it's 35 to 1? No, all the numbers the are rationale? 35 to 1. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, do you pick 35 just because of that? Like, I know it's 35 no. to 1 on any number, but like, why 35? No, you know what? I don't remember why. Probably some drunk asshole at the blackjack table probably said it out loud. And I just, I don't, I don't know where it came from, but I you hit did it once and it was I, just like green light. Yeah. You know, what's funny. The, I, I went on a cruise with my wife some years ago and we were outside the casino and her sister said, I don't understand. We're, like the roulette table was right there. We were waiting for a restaurant and I don't gamble. So um my my sister-in-law said i don't understand roulette i said well what you do here's how the game goes well i said so what i would do is i'd walk in there i'd put a hundred dollars on 35 black and that would pay 35 to one odd so i would get 3500 dollars like wow that, and i said yeah and i only i'm only risking 100 bucks if i lose i lose you know um and then i said so watch this roll 35 black 35 black comes out I shit you not, me and her started walking in because i'm like come here so i started walking in i wasn't even thinking about it. my wife came out of the bathroom and grabbed me, and I was literally going to sit down at that damn table. I was like, holy shit, it's working. I'm on. <laughs> it's so quick. Blitzcrew it. comes in and says, I once watched my dad win $42,000 in a night all on roulette. He was hitting max bets on straight numbers, any money on the oh. Jets already. I have, uh, so I had $5 in my DraftKings account, uh, so I did put that $5 on Brees Hall to win Offensive Player of the Year. Um, I would put more money on that. I probably will end up putting more money on it. I should do it before it shifts too much. Um, I believe I got it at plus, was it 2,500? I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at it. Um, the other option I would definitely look at, and one of our, uh, Dano, he's in the chat. I saw him. He had a really good bet. He said Lions Jets Super Bowl plus 21,000. I was like, Whoa. wow, that's a good Good bet. Like, if you're already betting on the Jets, you know, take a look at the NFC side and what teams you think might be able to make it. I would I would root hard for a Lions-Jets Super Bowl. That would be really fun. That would be really fun. Did I tell you guys the story of uh, my, the last time my dad went to Atlantic City with his friends for his, six, for his buddy's 60th birthday a few months no, ago? No, no. Okay, okay. So they go to Atlantic City. One of his friends is a uh, re retired... I believe retired either police officer or FDNY. Um, so, and he, now he does charity work. Like anytime, uh, you know, there's like a mass shooting or like something really bad happens somewhere, he'll go and like, he has this like pay it forward fund. Mm. So they go first five minutes. They're there. He hits a slot for 5k and he texts me and he's like, Oh, like my, you know, uh, Tommy, Tommy hit for, for 5k. We've been here five minutes. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Like really good guy from the town community. Mm -hmm. Like everyone knows, like I'm happy for him. He hit wheel of fortune slot at the Borgata in Atlantic city for $2.9 million. Oh my God. He was like, so my dad went with uh, my uncle, his brother, and an, a, an, one of their friends. They get a call. The guy is, like, ah. screaming, crying, like, I hit the jackpot. I hit the jackpot. They're like, you didn't hit the jackpot. Like, stop messing with it. You know, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning. And then oh my, my uncle God. was like, I'm going to go downstairs. And then he called my dad and was like, you got to come down here. He really hit the jackpot. And they were treated like royalty the, the next two to three days they were there. But I would have loved it if my dad hit the jackpot. But it, it happened to a good person. So it was, it's a really yeah. it was a good story. That's yeah. They're like, why wild. don't you stay here for another yeah. month? <laughs> stay here for a back. week. Try to get some of that back into the casino real quick. Yeah. That, damn. That's the biggest number I've ever seen one from a casino. I've got an interesting yeah. story. It's, it's. I feel like it's gambling because it's all magic to me. But my one buddy is really big into the cryptocurrency stuff, and he okay. threw a thousand dollars on. I don't know if you guys know this uh, dog with hat meme coin that's out there. He got in under a penny. 
it's at like three fifty or four dollars now. Dude made four million dollars in a month. <laughs> oh my yeah. fucking dude, unreal. <laughs> unreal. I, I put sixty bucks on it. I've got three grand right now. Looney Tunes. Yeah, that's I'm super pumped crazy. on it. But like unreal. Yeah, I'm say he's texting me. I was like, dude, this is the most bonkers thing I've ever seen. And I'm incredibly jealous. <laughs> I was like, I wish I threw more than 60 bucks on this. Dude, I Jeez. had people, I I had people when Bitcoin was 12 cents, 30 cents, something like it was under a dollar. Yeah. I had people literally, and more than one. I had I had one guy who was a miner, like he would mm -hmm. mine Bitcoin. He said, dude, just take a hundred dollars and just mm -hmm. buy it and just let it sit. Whatever, you know. I'm like, ah, it sounds so stupid. I had another guy. Um, he, he was investing every, every month into Bitcoin. He, dude, they would tell me so many times for years, a couple of years, get in, get in. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. It's stupid. Dude, I am so <sighs> filled with regret. I can't like even 60 think grand. I own right 70 Bitcoin. grand to coin. Right with Bitcoin, but not like that. Dude. dude, that's wild. I got in before the big burst on it, but I, the only reason I accidentally got in is because I had some leftover from a transaction I, I used it for. Um, and it was like under a penny. It was like fractions and fractions of pay. So I had like 12 bucks. <laughs> I was like, oh, there yeah. we go. Cool. Like, yeah, yeah great. Would have been nice to have a, a nice little <laughs> stack of change. Just a guy yeah. says he got in at Doge at 0. 0.00057. That's wild. I don't even know what Doge is at right now. 40 no cents maybe. But that's crazy. Holy shit. That's insane. Um, all right. We have reached the end of our show here tonight. Um, so Matt, I'm going to ask you to go over to last week's stream and get us some of our timestamps. We have a few that we can get through today. Some, Ooh. some recurring characters, but some new ones as well. Kuka Lake says Do Doge is at 19 cents right now. Shows how much I pay attention, but 19 yeah, cents from 0. 0.00057. Yeah. Not bad. Worth it. You imagine you put a thousand dollars on it. Ugh. Mm. Or ten million dollars. What if you put ten million on it? Then where did you? Do? All right, let's I had do ten this, million man. dollars. Great. Fantastic. Right. I wouldn't even have to do crypto. <laughs> First one is Kevin Vafadus. Uh, yeah, Vafadus. Yeah, I got okay, it. I know. I know how to spell his name. Oh, look at that! I, I've, That's I've, I haven't seen that name before. Oh, he's really? Not... Oh, he's a beanbagger. I love Vafadus. <laughs> oh, okay. Look at this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Andrew Grazanka's back. He's next. Love it. Uh, he Shotgun. did the Appalachian Trail hike. He sent me some pictures. Dude, this guy cooked a pizza on a rock. Oh, yeah, incredible. he did. Good for you, Wild. dude. Very that's, cool. my, that's one of my bucket lists is doing the whole Appalachian Trail. I live right near. I, I do little stretches of it all the time. So do I. Green Bean, when you come, uh, you, if you start doing it, I'm not too far. I'm like a stone's throw from it. I'll meet you in the middle. <laughs> yeah yeah i'll start walking from i'll start walking south you start walking north we'll meet in like right. i don't where would you wind up pennsylvania maybe yeah we meet in Pennsylvania. Well, well yeah next state up is maryland and then pennsylvania yeah unless it's I'll like i don't know how far the appalachians go like into Jer i feel like it bends a little bit north jersey no it goes through jersey though oh no i know i'm injured it like, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, right there yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got pure imagination. Uh, oh, next, I love it. You got uh, Joey Jets. Mm. All right, Eric Craig. I like it. All right, Eric. Donker Sloot. Oh, it's such a great name. <laughs> I apologize for that's your actual name. It's like every time I read it, oh, I just I giggle. No way. I'm going to bet there's no way that it's real, that's his real name. But Dude, I've seen some wild last names. I feel so bad if I make fun of one, but like that's a, that's a name. Titan Shifter. Uh, we got FBJT. Mm. James in there? <laughs> uh, no, we got a couple more. What? No uh, I'm upset. I can't we do my joke tonight. Peter from the beautiful Hudson Valley. Ah, good man. Peter S. Right. Got it. Stacks Max. And the last one is M.A. Carlson. Ma Carlson. Something like that. M.A. Carlson. 
my dude. But my no, dude. no James Falls, unfortunately. Oh, man, I really hope he's okay. He must have really hurt himself last week. <laughs> oh, where's my rim shot? I got one here. Oh, love yeah. it. <laughs> All right, Green Bean, what are we at? 52. Ooh, 52. All right, random number generator. Number 28, who we got? 28 is Cuca Lake. Ooh, hey, ooh. Miss, he leads the rigged brigade, brigade some weeks. So uh, I guess we should probably pick another person. Rig. I think Cuca Lake started the rig, maybe. <laughs> I think I he think, did, too. I think we're going to have to switch who gets it this week. Sorry, he's going to He's gonna get. I don't the, want him to win. Pick uh, pick Blitz Crew instead. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna get the uh, porno mags from Hempstead Lake State Park. It's there gonna it be great. Oh, there's a pillow you can cry into Kiyuka Lake for every rigged one you've thrown at us. Congratulations! Reach out to jetstalk247 at gmail.com or talkingjetshow at gmail.com. Send us your shipping information. We'll get you a nice uh, Talking Jets pillow that's right behind me. Ah. This has, yeah. you can have all of our monkified faces. <laughs> it's great. Look at the comment from Shawnee Rock at the bottom. He says, there's a pillow you can bite. <laughs> 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 when you watch Green Beans oh, yank his doodle. Oh, it's, not, it's not like that, everybody. <laughs> it's not like that. Oh, man. Online, this is absurd. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> We have reached the end of our show. Let's go around our panel, give our closing thoughts. Green Bean, any last words for our panel? Uh, yeah, fun show, everybody. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow? <laughs> what happened? What was Can that? <laughs> no, I'm going to sit on Matt's face. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. <laughs> no. <laughs> not <consent>. Oh, <laughs> no my way. God. Uh, oh, uh, this is... I love this. That's I great. love Tuesdays. Uh, tomorrow at 8 p.m. right here on Talking Jets, me and Tigo are going to go at it. We're going to talk draft strategies tomorrow. So good show. I hope you guys will join us. Matt, any last words? Oh, this, this show makes me laugh so much. I really love doing this every single week with you guys. But, yeah, tons of tons of Talking Jets content over here. Got Green Bean and Tigo tomorrow, me and Jeremy on Thursday. And as Ryan just popped up on the screen, Let's plug one more time the draft party. Yeah. Talking Jets draft party. Head over to talkingjets.com. Tickets on sale until April 16th. We got to let them the main event know uh, how many people we got coming. So we're really excited for it. We got the crowd cam. We've got raffles going on. We've got open bar, three hour open bar buffet. I think we've got two, one or two more VIP booths left. So if you guys want to come hang out, uh, little you get four tickets with the vip package um and a booth for the entirety of the draft so kind of nice uh if that's something that you're looking for or you could just come and hang out and uh you know complain about whoever the 10 pick is because someone's gonna be upset no matter who it is seems that we'll way. see that's ah, just it's i can't wait to like look at jet's twitter and just see how this fan base is imploding when brock bowers is the pick at 10 <laughs> everyone's losing their damn mind it's happening boys and girls but head over to Talking Jets. Join all the fun. This is our fifth year doing the draft party together, and we are really, really excited to do this in person. Going to be a lot of fun. This was a really fun Tuesday night. Let us know your favorite parts down below in the comment section. This is Talking Jets signing off. J-E-T-S. Let's go somewhere else. I can't take this nonsense anymore. How are you going to blame the defense? I got the pouch. Screw green bean. <laughs> Damn it. But once you get to the sausage, I feel like we're doing something. Go Jets. And, and that's the other part of this. The people are insanely jealous of this show. This show gets the best of the best. And it does a different way with positivity. What would you give up to see a Jets Super Bowl? All of my friends and family. <laughs> Hit those milk thumb, boys and girls. Freeze run. Freeze. Jets, Jets, Jets. Hold on to your underwear, ladies. And stand by, bitches. 
It's now time for Talking Jets with your hosts, Matt, Ryan, and Greenbean. Jets, Jets!